Interesting cap for his country, a real left field pick from Louis van Gaal, that one. Timber, Virgil van Dijk and Nathan Ake are the three centre-backs. Denzel Dumfries plays at right wing back as van Dijk wins an early header. Daly Blint over on the left-hand side. Teun Koopminers and Frankie de Jong, who really did show some of his wonderful touches of class and skill in the opening win against Senegal. Davy Klassen in the, in the hole, you'd say, sort of the most advanced of the midfield three. Gakpo and Birkvine as the front two. Memphis Depay, uh, again, as in the first game, will probably see appear from the bench. So the Netherlands play from left to right. They're all in orange. Black numbers on their backs. And Ecuador are in a lovely sort of rich dark blue white shorts white socks and they have some early defending to do their young left-sided center back Piero Hincapié has won a header a second header clears the ball to the halfway line Felix Torres now leaps high Estrada nods one to his left hand side there's the main man the skipper Enna Valencia on the ball former Everton and West Ham player Denzel Dumfries uh, has won it and Jurian Timber plays it forward very nearly got Bergvine away down the right hand side cleared up to the halfway line Estrada is battling for it, he's lost it, and Frankie de Jong with his first touch just plays a very measured pass across to Daly Plint. I'm trying to get an eye on Perozo. Your animal. My animal, yeah. Number 25, right side of that Ecuadorian back three. I thought you were going to say your inner animal there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for that, Matt. That comes later. Unleash it later. I tell you, I did, I did have to unleash it when Richarlison scored that goal <laughs> last night. I had to go. <laughs> go to the max that was Did it? oh that was that was an amazing i'll have to have a listen back to that <laughs> yeah. uh, de jong runs forward tries to control the ball on the volley class and lays it back to de jong de jong does a little 360 pirouette just lays it off to daily blint blint didn't see a way forward so comes back to ake ake across to van dyke playing in his first major tournament for his country missed the last one euro 2020 with the knee injury and hits a pass beyond Yuri and Timber, who wasn't ready for it, and it goes out for a throw to Ecuador. Good start to the game. Really good start to the game. I think it's going to be quite high tempo from how it looks. I remember watching Ecuador in the opening game, and I thought that they really did set about it with a bit of energy, especially in the middle of the park. Casado and Mendes, really good balance with each other. And I mean, really looking forward to see, seeing Hincape, mm. the left-sided young centre-back. He's only 20, 20, isn't he? Yeah. And, uh, you know, highly, highly rated. Yeah, Bayer Leverkusen player. He's on the left side of the back three. In the middle is Felix Torres, who was on the right of the back four in that opening game uh, against Qatar. And Jackson Perozo, the number 25, who is a giant. He's not the tallest at this World Cup because that honour goes to the Dutch goalkeeper, who's all in green uh, away to our left. That is Andres Nopper. He actually made Van Dijk look small. He did. Standing next to him in the, yeah. in the lineups, which tells you how big he is. So Perozo, Torres, Hincapié, the back three for Ecuador. Their goalkeeper is... Hernan Galindez, Angelo Preciado and Pervis Istupinian of Brighton are the two wing-backs. It's sort of 5-4-1 actually, Estrada we think is going to play sort of wide left rather than the front two. It was 4-4-2 in the first game. Man down, Angelo Preciado has just gone down right in the middle of play here. He's got a problem and the Netherlands have, have stopped the game and we're going to have to see if he can get some, some medical attention. So Gonzalo Plata, Jegson Mendes, who Matt has mentioned in central midfield, Moises Caicedo, another Brighton player who's the star man for Ecuador, Michael Estrada and then Enna Valencia uh, up top. Not Did, too sure what this no idea. injury is, Ali, to be honest. He's just kind of gone down off the ball whether or not something happened prior to that so he is flat on his back and the medical team have his legs up in the air he, he just he just stopped the Netherlands were coming forward and he just said to sort of said to Daly Blint I'm struggling and sat down and the Netherlands put the ball out of play so it just means having had a nice sort of build up to the game and a bit of atmosphere that has that has dissipated I think it might be a, a groin problem I think it was no. a, a slight groin related yeah. injury he yeah. appears to be okay. And he's, I he's shrugging your, it off. I understood your hand signal yeah. there, Matt. I got you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think I need to describe that no. any further. No. And there's a picture of the Iron Tulip, as they call him, Louis Van Gaal. That's, that's a good that's nickname, a isn't it? Bright tie as well, isn't oh, it? Oh, that's that's Netherlands orange, what, isn't what, it? What is it? It's a luminous, wasn't it? Yeah. It looks good, and he's got a, he's got a stern face on, but he's a character, and we love him for it. Four and a half minutes in, Netherlands nil, Ecuador nil. England against USA on the way on Five Live and BBC Sounds tonight with John Murray, Rob Green and Micah Richards all part uh, of the coverage with Kelly Cates in the stadium uh, alongside the team. Denzel Dumfries takes a throw. It's, yeah, Preciado, he's back on. Yeah, he's back on. He's OK. Yeah. And he's just jogging into his defensive position on the right-hand side. Nathan Ake 
runs up to the halfway line, ball through the middle to Birkvine, it bounced up on him, he couldn't quite control it, Klassen gets onto a loose ball, here's Gakpo, shot with the left foot, oh! oh! Stunning finish from Cody Gakpo! It's his second goal of the tournament, just five minutes into this game, and that was unstoppable! Netherlands won, Ecuador nil, Virgil van Dijk comes in and celebrates with a flying karate kick. Wow, what a strike, Gakpo. Unbelievable finish. Talk about take an opportunity that has just popped out in front of you. There is no hesitation. Some of the best finishes you see are ones that are so instinctive. And this is exactly that. I mean, it was a really good challenge. I think it was Casado that just got back in, made a really good tackle. The ball popped loose. Klassen's in there, sets it to one side. It's a touch onto his left foot. And there's a little channel just on that near post. For him to even see that, he uses the, the, the player and he smashes it with his left foot. Quality strike, quite low, or shall I say like medium height, just inside the post. The goalkeeper, Gal Gal Galindez? Galindez. Galindez, yep. absolutely no, no chance. chance. I mean, he threw himself at it, but it was yep. a, probably at least a foot away. It was a brilliant strike. Doesn't matter what his name is, Matt, no, he's not saving that. It though. didn't matter, <laughs> honestly. It was a great, great strike. I mean, he's in good form, isn't he? Oh, he Brilliant is, Matt. And, and look at his... I mean, this is very early on in his international career. 11th cap. That's his fifth goal already. So he's one in two straight yeah. away for the Netherlands. Yeah. Full of confidence. Playing brilliantly at, at club level. Alerting attention of, you know, other clubs all around Europe. We've been talking so much in this tournament about players who are coming to the end of their careers, like Messi and Ronaldo and Neymar, who we now hear is out of the group stages of this tournament. Brazil will hope to have him back for the knockout stages. But it's also a stage for players like Gakpo. Yeah, I mean, at every World Cup tournament, the same. You'll, you'll uncover talent. You'll see the, the young players come through. But he's hit the ground running like, well, abnormally good, to be honest. And, and it's the confidence and it's that, it's that free flowing. We, we spoke about it when we were talking to Needham earlier about the, the USA team, the, the, the youthful, the, the fearlessness. And he certainly took that in that manner. Caicedo's ball in towards the edge of the uh, Dutch penalty area. Plata wasn't quite able to take it in his stride. Here's Preciado, the uh, right wing back who had the groin problem early on in the game. Keeps possession, gets the ball back to Jegson Mendes. Low cross is dealt with by Ake. Clears away with his right foot. Netherlands won, Ecuador nil. We've played seven and a half minutes here at the Khalifa International Stadium. Ecuador attack down the left. Cross comes in from Hincapié. No one attacks it at the far post. Blint is there, hooks it away with his left foot. Mendes has got this covered. Thinks about letting it run out of play for a throw in, but decides to just knock it back to Perozo. They are a threat when the ball's wide, Ecuador. You saw that in the first game. Crosses. Their players arrive really well. I think set pieces in qualifying, they scored, I think, some of the highest amount of set piece goals in, in qualifying for the tournament. So certainly an element of their game that, that the Dutch have to be aware of. Eight minutes gone. Netherlands won Ecuador nil. Netherlands win. Automatically takes them through to the last 16. They face Qatar in their final group game. You'd expect them to win that. You'd imagine they go through as group winners, the winners of this group face the runners-up in the England and Wales group, uh, Group B. If Ecuador win this game, can turn this around and come out with the win, they would only need to avoid defeat against Senegal in their final group game uh, to get through to the last 16. And the other thing Steve Crossman said, actually, importantly, ahead of the game, if, if it finishes as a draw, Qatar, the hosts, are out before they even play uh, their third game in the competition. Felix Torres who's the number two, he's the middle of the three centre-backs for Ecuador. He's got a um, sort of bright peroxide streak across the top of his head. Here's Enna Valencia, the captain, just inside the Dutch half. Lays a ball back to Caicedo. Caicedo plays back to his central midfield partner, Jegson Mendes. Now Felix Torres. Torres in the light blue boots. Plays wide to the left to Hincapié. He's closed down. Dumfries in quickly, wins the ball. That'll be a throw-in for Ecuador on the left. Estupinian. So the, the wing backs will stay wide, as Matt was saying. They will try and get those two Preciado, Estupinian on the ball and get that delivery in for the likes of Estrada and Valencia. Here's Torres shuffling forward inside his own half, plays to his left and uh, is off target, plays the ball straight out of play for a Dutch throw. I mean, we were wondering really getting the measure of Ecuador. It's very difficult on that first game, wasn't it? You know, Qatar 
really didn't turn up and, and play anywhere probably near nearly as good as what they did today to be honest so I think that they never really came under pressure but they certainly wouldn't have been expecting that kind of hammer blow early on that was a really good piece of play you know the goal was absolutely outstanding from Gak Gakbo so you know I, I don't think they could do too much about that but this is the challenge for them now whether or not they can keep their heads up keep doing what they're doing and, and see how well they do just looking at the table as well with the Senegal win they're on three points if the Netherlands win this game you've got Ecuador and Senegal going head to head in the final group game both sitting on three points so that will be a big one at the moment Ecuador's goal difference is one better than Senegal's and that's what it initially comes down to as the cross comes in from Preciado into the far post that's the opinion heads it down Valencia hits the volley into the ground headed away Valencia immediately reacts chases it back might lose it here on the right Gakpo does brilliantly kept that in oh. play with a back heel wow and here's De Jong Coop Miners now but that right there is exactly what they like to do Ecuador get those sweeping crosses into the box they they load the box with bodies as well they had two or three arriving in there and any kind of ball back across the goal there's two or three Ecuador players just oh. waiting to push in <laughs> Ake was under pressure. He did manage to get his pass back to his goalkeeper, Nopper. And Estrada just absolutely shoved him with both hands off balance, straight to the floor. Assistant referee spotted it and the referee waved play on. Preciado intercepts a crossfield ball, comes flying forward to win a header. That runs to Ake, and Ake stays well away from Estrada this time and plays it across to Virgil van Dijk, who's got that lovely, sort of lugubrious, casual stride as he brings the ball forward plays to his right to Yuri and Timber Timber up to the goal scorer at Gakpo Gakpo in the inside right channel just lays it off to Cope Miners Cope Miners is hustled out of possession Valencia picks it up for Ecuador deep inside his own half Whitey goes to Preciado run being made down the right hand side by Gonzalo Plata he's one-on-one -on -one with Ake Ake stands his ground takes the ball off Plata plays it back to Noppert and Noppert gets good contact on the left-footed clearance up towards Bergvine and Bergwijn has fouled the animal, uh, Perozo. So free kick for Ecuador. I wasn't too sure what Bergwijn did wrong there, to be honest. Just used his body, backed in a little bit like every centre forward would do to try and hold the ball up. And the referee gave a foul, and I think he looked at the ref and went, "It, it is the animal. It's, it's how, the animal. How can I foul him? Animal cruelty." <laughs> it's played back from Estupinian uh, here to Torres. Torres with his right foot up the middle of the pitch here. Estrada's done well to keep control for Ecuador and curls a lovely ball out to the right uh, to Preciado. Poor second touch from him. Blint's able to clear for the Netherlands. Gakpo gets up so well to try and win the header. Comes off his head, but no one there for the Netherlands to take possession. So 13 minutes in, it's Netherlands 1, Ecuador 0. A win that is taking the Netherlands through to the last 16 with a final group game still to come. Estupinian plays back to Torres. Torres under pressure from Birkvine. First time ball across to Perozo. Perozo back to the goalkeeper, Galindez. Forward to Torres, just outside his penalty area. No pressure on him for now. Rolls a pass into space in the middle of the park. And Frankie de Jong read that, comes across, cuts it out. Dumfries is tripped. And that'll be a free kick uh, for the Netherlands. Read that really well there, Frankie de Jong. I mean, it's not a side of the game that you really associate with him. He's such a quality technician, but out of possession is crucial as well for top players. And he certainly read that really well and just stepped across and won the ball back for Holland. They are famously, the Netherlands, of course, one of those teams that, that has never won the World Cup, despite the fact they have, they have come so close and delighted us so mm. much down the years. Three finals they've lost, 74 78 and then against Spain in 2010. Cope Miners low ball into the penalty area. Ecuador get bodies in the way. Gakpo lurking on the edge of the box, cleared away from him. De Jong up to win ahead and nods it forward. The ball is loose. Here's Gakpo just outside the Ecuadorian penalty area. But Valencia gets onto his pass and Valencia suddenly away down the left for Ecuador. Estepinian busting a gut to get ahead of him, then runs into an offside position. Valencia holds onto it, decides to take on Timber. Timber's too strong for him wins the duel and the ball goes behind for a goal kick to the Netherlands. Oh, I mean, when he gets the ball, there is a different feel about Ecuador. There's almost like this little belief just kicks on when Valencia has the ball and he's running at a play. He took on too much there because I think just offload the ball and then re recirculate it around the pitch. But he's certainly got a presence for them on the pitch, hasn't he? Certainly does. 15 minutes gone first half. Early goal from Gakpo. If you've missed it, by the way, 
you can on most smart speakers ask BBC Sounds so you speak to your speaker and you say to BBC Sounds can you rewind a certain number of minutes or can you rewind to a certain time of the day so this game kicked off at four o'clock so you say to the speaker can you rewind to four o'clock you can get the start of the game you can hear the goal and then you can catch us up again technology these days I suppose you can fast forward if you want as well <laughs> yeah. now they've not quite got to that yet man. <laughs> thankfully for us here's Van Dyke inside his penalty area cross to Timber Timber forward to Gakpo Gakpo just takes a, a little whack on the back of the legs there from Hincapié he's bouncing in he Gakpo you can tell he just he just looks bright he's got that little spring in his step why wouldn't you You've just banged one in from outside the box with your left foot and he's just popping up all over the pitch just full of confidence yeah I always think when you see young players as well and you're trying to get a handle of them sort of trying to liken them to something because of his build he's so sort of yeah. tall isn't he yeah and, I'm going to work on that one, actually, in the first half here. Who are you uh, I don't know. likening him to? I'm then? not sure. I'm not sure. In terms of the position he plays, Yeah. that sort of build and the way he moves. Well, I know. I mean, you, you did the previous uh, yeah. Netherlands game, didn't yeah. you? And when you look at the team, the one thing you, that does stand out, or, or when I looked before, is that in terms of attacking-wise, maybe not the names of the past that you associate yeah. with this country in terms of Burkamp and Bastard, you know, those type of players. Yeah. But, I mean he's certainly stepping up in this tournament and showing real attacking quality even though he's not an out and out striker Ake's ball to Blint on the left down the line to Birkvine Birkvine volleys it back De Jong holds off the challenge from Platter gives it to Birkvine he's under pressure inside his own half plays back to Ake Dutch in control here at the moment leading Ecuador by a goal to nil and I think particularly having scored a couple of goals and important goals because he was the one that made the breakthrough late on against Senegal just relieves the pressure of not having Depay in the team so they can work Depay back to fitness yep. and not rush him onto the field yep. ball across to Ake seven o'clock tonight don't miss it five live in BBC sounds England against the USA England following on from their 6-2 win uh, against Iran earlier on in the group today I'm sure you're aware Wales lost 2-0 against Iran so that game on Tuesday which will be a full commentary on five live in BBC sounds at seven o'clock Wales now have to win against England to give themselves a chance of getting through to the last 16 Gakpo is tackled and the ball goes out for a throw into the Netherlands just inside the Ecuadorian half on the right uh, Klassen lobs it here to Dumfries is that the biggest technical area you've ever seen at a stadium? It's huge, isn't it? It's like a, That's a pitch. It's a penalty box, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It's, it's a long, long way out to the edge of the pitch. Nice turn from Gakpo. Looks to release Dumfries down the right. In Capier and then Torres clears with his left foot. Estupinian can't control it. Goes out for a throw to the Netherlands. The one thing you wonder as well, just going into, depending on what happens in this game, Ecuador in that game against Qatar sort of took their foot off the gas a little bit in the second half. 2-0 in front, yep. didn't go for more goals. If it does come down to goal difference, that that might come back to to bite them. But still a long way to goal in, go in this game. Gakpo, ball bobbles off his knee, tries another back heel to keep it in play. He's actually managed to win the Dutch a throw. And he wasn't, he wasn't looking in a very promising position there, so he's done OK for his team. They can start again, throw in just about level with the edge of the... Ecuador penalty area their manager Gustavo Alfaro is a 60-year-old uh, Argentine and he's gone right to the corner so he has walked a long way to his right because it's so wide the technical area it takes you almost halfway down the pitch as well to uh, to try and get instructions across to his team talking about nicknames his as a kid was lettuce because of his wavy hair man <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> isn't it I've never heard what? that before. What, what would that relate to a lettuce? I don't know. I don't know. It must be a... Must wavy be, hair. It must be an Ecuadorian thing. So any friend you've got with wavy hair, you can go with lettuce from now on if you want. <laughs> <laughs> 19 minutes gone first half. Ake with a header up in the air. The ball drops inside the Ecuadorian half. Estupinian challenged by Dumfries. That's a foul. Free kick for Ecuador. First... They've got to try and raise the tempo a little bit this game, Ecuador. Definitely. Now. It, it started off, you know, the first four, five, six minutes, I thought, oh, yeah, they're going, the goal's gone in. It's just gone a little bit flat, haven't they? Yeah, and it, it's why you feel, I can see loads and loads of yellow shirts inside the stadium, yeah. but they're, they're not on their feet and, and no. behind their team. So you wonder how many of them are, are, you know, you hesitate to ask the question, but genuine Ecuador fans, because, you know, their home record in South American qualifying with their fans behind them 
yeah. is, is unbelievable. They've not got that, that support. And the Netherlands don't really either. It's high really. altitude there as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. Dumfries at pace, running at the Ecuadorian defence. Torres kicks the ball into Dumfries. Dumfries down hurt. Mm. Netherlands want the game stopped. Ecuador will do that for them. And they'll knock the ball out of play. And we'll have a break in play. So, uh, 20 minutes gone. Netherlands leading Ecuador by a goal to nil. And Gakpo is, is coming over for a, for a drink of water, having scored that goal. Rocket of a shot with his left foot uh, to put the, the Netherlands in front. Where's Dumfries? He's OK, I think, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's walking back to the side of the pitch unaided. So he's got to leave the field to come back on the field. But he's going to be OK. And I think it was from the tackle. It was more, I think it was uh, Torres, wasn't it? Who just volleyed the ball straight into his stomach as, as he was falling over, just kicked the ball straight into him. And I think that's just took the wind out of his sails, but he's, he's backing up on his feet. So the Netherlands give the ball back uh, to Ecuador. I was just about to tell you, it's the first time they've ever met competitively, uh, these two nations. They have played a couple of friendlies, but it's the first competitive international between them here in 2022. Estrada chesting the ball down, bundled to the floor, wants the free kick and, and gets the free kick. And I've got a question for you, Matt. Do you consider a defeat on penalties in a World Cup knockout game a defeat or a draw against your record as a manager or a team? Well, if, if it's a record mm. of defeats and losses, then does it matter if you lose in 90 minutes? Mm. 120 minutes or on penalties does I, it matter is I, I, the, the defeat is the defeat that's what it? I think I think if it's a knockout game and you lose on penalties you've lost and you don't go through to the next round the reason I say that is because I saw in the notes the Netherlands it says have only ever lost two games yeah. against South American opponents but they have lost more than that because they've okay. lost a couple on penalties but but then if if a team loses a game in extra time that goes down as a defeat exactly yeah so uh, yeah. we agree I what's think. the difference yeah yeah Ball back with Galindez, the Ecuadorian goalkeeper. Certainly no penalties involved in this one. That will come later on uh, in the tournament. Felix Torres up the middle of the pitch here. Estrada plays it back to Perozo, right-sided centre-back. Across to his right-hand side. Jegson Mendez is, is out there and he's being harried and hassled, but he's kept the ball and plays it back to Torres. And as Matt Upson was just saying, they just need to... They need some help from their fans. They need to up the intensity uh, of the play as well. Enna Valencia has dropped deep. Torres just inside his own half looking for the run of Estrada nowhere near him with that no, pass no so it's a poor pass way too straight he's on the kind of left hand side of the pitch he wants to put a bit more angle on it for the run but he hits it so straight and it just skips straight through into Nopart uh, Ake to Blint on the left Blint's curling ball down the left wing is a good one and Birkvine controls it quickly and starts dribbling at the Ecuadorian defenders back heel from him support from Blint charging up on the left hand side Blint appeals for the throw that goes Ecuador's way though in their right back position Preciado takes it quickly thrown to Perozo. he's closed down by Birkvine Perozo digs his right foot underneath the ball floats it up to the halfway line Van Dijk got an initial clearance on it but now Ecuador away down the right hand side Valencia waiting in the middle if they can find him cross comes in oh and he was lining up the volley didn't quite fall for him Caicedo drives one that is blocked on the edge of the box Valencia is there trying to win the header Beaten in the air by Dumfries. I think he let Dumfries win that because he then knew his teammate was going to get onto it. Valencia finds Caicedo. Caicedo into the box. Little cutback here. And he couldn't get the shot away. Plata, that is better from Ecuador. You just see those little moments of energy, don't you? That's what Ecuador are all about. The ability to run past people, the pace, certainly in wide areas. I thought Caicedo just overran that ball there, but he managed to flick that back with the outside of his right boot past De Jong. But there was enough Dutch defenders in the box to deal with it. What is the betting if they do get back in the game? It is Enna Valencia. Having scored the two, of course, in the opening game against Qatar, having scored their last five goals at the World Cup. I think it was Platter as well on the wide yeah. on the right hand side. They showed a good bit of pace. And that's him now. Platter with a low left footed cross into the penalty area. Timber blocks it. Ecuador come again down the left. Platter plays it back into Estepinian, gives it back to Platter. Estepinian again, trying to get the cross in. Oh, does get it in well to the far post. Headed away by Van Dijk, second header from Cope Miners. Good little spell for Ecuador here, 20 minutes remaining in the first half. Group A action at World Cup 2022. 
Five live on BBC Sounds, Netherlands 1, Ecuador 0. Valencia lays it back to Estrada, Valencia's under pressure. Timber wins it off him, immediately Gakpo sets off, hoping for the ball over the top, it's over hit, he won't catch it, the idea was right, but it's back with the uh, Ecuadorian keeper, Hernan Galindez. I see Virgil van Dijk really being animated at the moment with his teammates, waving his arms up in the air, waving people up the pitch, organising everyone around him. And that he can understand the threat when that ball's wide. They're a real threat, Ecuador. The, the quality of crosses are brilliant. Better noise. So it's yeah. th that little spell from the team has lifted the fans and it's that... It's, it's, very, it's very much the plays having to lift the fans exactly. as opposed to the, the stadium lifting the play. Yeah. Valencia looking for the 1-2 with Estrada. Estrada's caught surely by Timber. That's a free kick. Referee didn't like it. Referee is Mustafa Gorbal, Algerian referee. Uh, whose, whose shirt almost matches Louis van Gaal's tie. It's probably a slightly darker orange, but it is incredibly bright. There's a lot of bright colours around. Even, even the, the, the orange in the stadium. Yeah. It kind of all matches pretty well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Free kick, Ecuador, just inside the Dutch half. Netherlands 1, Ecuador 0. England, USA on the way tonight. Build-up will start after this game. John Murray will be bringing the team news as soon as we get it. We know that Harry Kane is fit and ready to go for England. Kyle Walker, I think, also fit and available for selection. James Madison, the one who can't be involved as yet. Ball down the right-hand side for Platter to chase. He won't catch it. That goes behind for a goal kick to the Netherlands. And you and I, Matt, will hope that we'll be back in time to watch it but listen to it at the same time you see we can do that over here if we're clever sync up the old BBC sounds sounds like a plan <laughs> we'll be uh, dashing out of that car park as we, quick will. As we can we wheels, will. wheel spinning that's right Jegson Mendes to Valencia lays it back to Mendes oh it's the pinion they made a good run and Mendes couldn't quite find him with the pass coat miners was blocked off there surely free kick no referee says no Estepinian that's a good ball to find Valencia on the left hand side Valencia's cross in Estrada with a flick that was Ooh. clever towards the far post Preciado is there step over from Preciado on the turn hits the cross Ake blocks it that's a corner and they're getting right back into this game now Ecuador having some really good sustained patches of pressure always from wide areas always runs from the center out to the wide areas balls down the channels and crosses first time into the box again they've got three players arriving in that box lovely little flick uh, from Estrada with his left foot just to guide that to the back post that is a proper bunch of players around yeah. the penalty spot that is almost the entire set of outfield players all, all looking for a partner on on the dance floor well, set, set pieces they're a real threat you said yeah real threat yeah. they scored I think it's eight uh, set plays right. during qualifying and, and crosses from wide areas they, they they love attacking the ball in the air so there's a wall of orange Van Dyke right in amongst it trying to keep an eye on the Ecuador team that, that are, are lined up in, in single file now they make their runs delivery into the near post Poor skiddy ball. one yeah it wasn't great cleared that'll be a throw in to Ecuador platter not out of 10 for the delivery well actually not out of 10 would be straight out of play maybe <laughs> maybe maybe one not out of 10 would just be missing the ball won't yeah, it? probably air yeah, shot yeah throw in Ecuador on the right again you, you could when they won that corner that the noise levels went up again so Ecuador need to keep this up towards half time we've got just over 15 minutes to play Netherlands won Ecuador nil. Floated ball up to the edge of the Dutch penalty area. Header won by Estupinian. Estrada, I think, bumped into Van Dijk, knocked him over. And that will be a free kick uh, to the Netherlands. Um, in terms of matching up that commentary with Five Live and the TV pictures, if it's a BBC game, which I don't think England-USA is tonight, if it's a BBC television game, you can go on the iPlayer and click on World Cup Extra and get it. If it's an ITV game, what I do is just be a little bit clever, get the pictures up, turn the sound down, and then just sync your, your BBC Sounds listening of our commentary with the pictures. That's the way I'd, I'd go. Uh, Ake. Sounds very technical. Uh, well, it's, it just it takes a little bit of fiddling and a little bit of work. Yeah. But, but, you know, hopefully with no internet glitches, you'll be OK. De Jong striding forward. Thought he was brought down. Still on the floor. Oh, might break here for Bergvine. Edge of the Ecuadorian box. Bergvine on the dribble. Coke Miner's in support on the left. Perozo has to be careful with the challenge. Blint plays it back to Klaassen. Here's De Jong, always seems to have that time, surrounded by blue shirts. Cross comes in, initially missed by Torres, Hincapié behind him, clears it, it's a Dutch corner. He looks a character, Torres, doesn't he? In the middle of the back three there for Ecuador, swings a wild leg at that ball and misses it, and turns around and waves his hands in the air. He's quite an animated character, 
which I think allows him to go and be really aggressive. Some really good defensive stuff, but maybe a tiny bit rash at times. Just got to try and contain that and be a little bit more solid. That, that sort of blonde strike down the middle of the head makes him look like the, yeah. evil, the evil gremlin. I can't remember what the name of the evil. Gizmo was the cute one, but that's... <laughs> the evil gremlin. Yeah, in what the was, middle. Was there a lot of nice ones? Yeah, the gizmo was a nice one at the there start. Corner, corner comes in. Well, that's the problem, you see, Matt, if you don't look after them properly. Do you not remember the movie? You can't feed them after midnight. Ah, uh, yeah, go. Exactly. Ball into the Dutch half. De Jong chases it back. He's under no pressure and plays across to the right. You might be eating quite late tonight. Ball to the right. Uh, stripe, Stripe. The producers just said Stripe is oh. the Stripe. Of course, it's Stripe, isn't it? Because it's the Stripe, stripe of Stripe. So there. So we got we've got the animal and we've got Stripe now. So we just got to come up, <laughs> cut for one for Hincapié on the left hand side of the back three. Uh, Cope Miners to Dumfries, who's right on the touchline on the right. Klassen tries to flick a pass down the line towards him. Tackled. Throw in from Estupinian up towards Estrada. Estrada's done a good job up there for for Ecuador in terms of holding things up and flicking things on and battling for the ball. Cope Miners down, free kick Netherlands, push and shove between Timber and Estrada. There's a lot of tussling for the ball in this game at the moment. Yeah. Not, not in terms of tackling and, and going to ground, but a lot of kind of shoulder to shoulder, grappling for the ball while, while they're on their feet. It's, yes. it's that type of game at the moment. Yeah. Just to continue the 80s theme, I'm pretty sure that the guy who played Poncherello in chips was called Eric Estrada. I think the actor's now on us. I mean, that's, I don't know where that's come from. <laughs> so he might have to be Poncherello up front. Someone's going to have to check that for me back at base as well now. Here's Coke Miners. <laughs> Coke Miners wins it for the Netherlands. Midway inside the Ecuadorian half. Ball into the edge of the box. Gagpo, little one two with Klassen. Klassen couldn't get it back to him. Trips over on the edge of the box. Chance for Ecuador to bring it away. On the turn, looking for the ball wide left. Valencia is there, and I think he's on side. Chests it down. Estupinian, left wing back in the middle. Valencia's going to hit one. Oh, Nopper gets down, makes the save. That was fizzing towards the near post. I think it was heading in. It certainly was heading in. It was well inside that near post. And Nopper had to react. I mean, he read it really well, the goalkeeper. The moment he stepped inside Valencia, he's got a good starting position. But it's a really good strike. And again, it's that man. He just is so direct. When he gets the ball, something happens. Yeah. You know, whether he's running off the ball, he's got a real purpose about his play at the moment. 13 minutes remaining in the first half. Five live on BBC Sounds. Netherlands 1, Ecuador 0. Estupinian and way swinging corner. Headed away by Urian Timber. Jackson Mendes, diagonal ball in towards the Dutch box. Dumfries heads it away. Throw in for Ecuador on the left. No, offside flag is up, so that'll be a free kick. To the Netherlands. Was it Gizmo the friendly? Gizmo was the cute one. Friendly Gremlin. Yeah. Yeah. So Gizmo was the was one it. that was first bought by the dad <laughs> that was looked after and then all the other ones turned bad. It's a good movie. Good Christmas movie. I remember actually, it well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have to watch that yeah. when I get back. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Netherlands won Ecuador nil and it dark night skies love lovely temperature sort of light breeze when we entered the stadium as well this evening here's van dyke it'll be really cool on that pitch because i i was pitch side for the england game and it was very cold those all those little holes see the little that's, circular that's blasting out that is blasting really? out really cold air right, yeah okay. and there's a lot of them dotted all around the stadium but pitch side is a lot cooler than where we sat here blint down the line to classen classen Man behind him, it's Perozo who blocks his little flick, goes out for a throw into the Netherlands. On the left, halfway line, leading 1-0. As it stands, heading through to the last 16. Obviously, if England beat the USA tonight in their group, they will be uh, in an extremely strong position in that group as well. Iran sitting on three points, Wales just the one, USA just the one as well, going into that game tonight. Full commentary on the way. Uh, here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Birkvine, good strength, bounces off Perozo. Cope Miners, has he got time to get the pass away? Just stumbling forward, but does it. Finds Dumfries, Dumfries in his light green boots. Gakpo's made a good run down the right, not quite in time to get to the ball. It's gone behind for a goal kick. So at the moment, that moment from, from Gakpo is going to be really important in this game. They haven't created a lot more, have they, the Dutch at all, in terms no. of opportunities no. or really good uh, collective combinations around the box it hasn't been that kind of performance yeah. from them at all it's, 
bit like it's funny enough, it's almost the reverse of the first game out where they left the goal scoring till late yeah. and didn't show it until then they've but, shown it early in this game and then it's disappeared but they weren't much of a threat in that game either no, were they no no so Louis van Gaal will, will need improvement on that front I think Memphis Depay definitely will make a difference when he gets into the action because he's been so prolific for them not not only in terms of scoring goals but creating goals as well Estepinian with the interception Caicedo Plays it into midfield, there's Plata, Plata has support from Jegson Mendes outside him on the right, midway inside the Dutch half, they're going to come back to the left here, Estupinian looks up and floats the cross towards the far post, Noppert's enormous and he's yeah. going to come and gobble that up. I mean they love a floaty cross, I mean the amount of times, that just any kind of opportunity to cross the ball, even from deep, they're going to do it, but... Like you said, Noppart is so tall, he's going to come and gobble them up all day. Edgar Davids has just come marching off the Dutch bench to, to really bark at someone out there on the field. Did he play it's Davids? No, no, I, no. I, I, I just remember watching him though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. I remember watching that game, um, was it against Argentina when they went down to 10 men? Was it Argentina? World Cup game. World was Cup it? game. Not the one they won 2 1 with the amazing De Bergkamp Dennis goal. Bergkamp. That no, goal. Not make someone then stuck it in the yeah, top corner. Yeah, 98. Unbelievable game. Yeah, he was yeah. unreal in that <laughs> match, wouldn't he? Brilliant World Cup yeah. memories. Uh, throw in for the Netherlands on the right. They're leading Ecuador by a goal to nil. Talking about all those World Cup conversations. If you've not caught it yet, the Match of the Day Top 10 podcast, well worth a listen, available on the BBC Sounds app. Go searching for that. Also available to watch. They've all been filmed, those episodes, so you can get those on the on the eye player as well Dumfries's throw up towards Gakpo tries to lay it off here to Klassen but yeah that, that threat from the Dutch is it's just not there is it it's, yeah. you know one real moment of brilliance you know a sharp finish out of nowhere it's just been the difference in this game because yeah. other than that you have to say Ecuador are probably pushing a little bit harder and looking mm. a little bit more threatening going forwards yeah and out of nowhere is right for the goal there's a handball there by Caicedo he felt he was pushed over he's now going to try and prevent them taking the free kick quickly and it's got to be careful he doesn't get booked there free kick for the Netherlands but it, yeah it came as sort of from a loose bounce of a ball didn't it yeah. and, then, and then they turned it into something exactly. brilliant it was but. a tackle I think from Caicedo came back won the ball back it popped into Klassen yeah. he laid it off and then bang it was a left foot screamer really yeah Eight minutes remaining in the first half. Estrada's done his job there. No, sorry, Platter's done his job there. He stood in front of the ball for a good minute before the Netherlands took the free kick. And then he walks away. And Ake just comes back to the goalkeeper, Noppert, who has been pretty faultless in his first game and a half for the Netherlands at the start of his international uh, career. At the age of 28, the ball might drop to... Oh, Dumfries nearly did good high tackle. up. Good tackle on him, absolutely right. And the ball goes out for a throw into Netherlands on the right. Birkvine comes jogging across to take it. Short, stocky striker with the socks rolled down. Plays the ball down the right-hand side. Cope Miners the, with the one-two with De Jong. Now Birkvine involved. Good skill. Little drag back from him. Cope Miners goes for the back heel down the line. That's cut out. Platter. Good vision from Platter there. Little switch pass to the left-hand side. This is Caicedo. Moises Caicedo of Brighton. Back to uh, his Brighton teammate Estupinian. Mendes joins in. Gets it back from Plata. Estupinian involved again on the left. Rolls the pass into the middle. De Jong comes flying in to try and win it. He's done that. Bergvine controls it just inside Ecuador's half. Challenge from Hincapié. That will be a free kick to the Netherlands. It's not a bad foul that from Hincapié. I th thought the Dutch were on the break then. And he just sees the opportunity to step inside. Bergwijn had his body between him and the ball and he just trips him up, gets away with no yellow card either. 1-0 to the Netherlands, enough to take them through this evening to the last 16 ahead of their final group game against Qatar. Ake plays to his left, De Jong just inside Ecuador's half, dark blue shirts closing in on him, Daly Blint under pressure, manages to keep the ball in play, comes all the way back to Andris Noppert, we were hearing from Marcel van der Kran ahead of the game telling us he comes from a tiny little village with just one pub but you imagine they're they're all there watching it back in the Netherlands here's de Jong forward to Blint nice first time layoff from Blint Klassen down by the byline on the left gets the cross in Perozo blocks it goes out for a throw to the Dutch it's quite interesting watching Virgil van Dijk in a back three as well isn't it in the yeah. centre I mean he's a very laid-back style anyway the way he plays but in that three in the middle there 
he really does just orchestrate things. I mean, he just kind of looks like he coasts through the game yeah. sometimes, doesn't it? You know, it, it probably suits him quite a lot to play in the middle of a three. Yeah, cruises, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. Right. You're right. Never looks, no. never looks flustered, and he's and he's doing all the organising as well. Doing a lot of that, a lot of gesturing, a lot of arm movement, waving mm. his hands, pulling people about, pushing people up the pitch. And Capier plays the ball back to the goalkeeper Galindez who's only had the one shot to try and save and he couldn't get anywhere near it early in the game. Uh, Valencia deep inside his own half, plays back to Hincapié, the 20-year-old. Ball forward, headed away by Van Dijk, and will go straight out of play for a throw-in to Ecuador. Manager's looking uh, a little irate and uh, is whirling his arms around to try and get a message across to, to his team. I mean, I've not seen Van Hal pacing the... Uh, no technical area at all no you won't you won't see him much Matt I mean he's obviously yeah. not been well I think he's really trying to sort of conserve his strength it's quite noticeable actually in the first game that it was only a couple of times he came out at all was it? And, and left it a lot to kind of yeah. his 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 fellow coaching staff to, yeah. to do it um, throw in for Ecuador on the left Esther Pinian waits to take five minutes remaining in the first half we'll be handing back to Kelly Cates at half time she's going to be in the stadium tonight for England against the USA full commentary from seven o'clock UK time England's second group game after the thumping 6-2 win over Iran which Matt was here to witness ball out for a throw in to the Dutch in the right back position if England or Wales end up as runners up in group B they would play here in the last 16 against the winners of Group A, which could well, you'd fit, if the Netherlands win this, you feel they will go on to win the group. They'd only need a point against Qatar, and you'd imagine that they would would win that game. But actually, this, whether England or Wales were, were to face the Netherlands, on this evidence so far, not hugely no. troubling. Uh, Ecuador, who've done a lot of the, the pushing in this first half, come forward again. Perozo flicks it into the penalty area. Nopper quickly off his line, dives forward and catches it on the bounce. He really has been off his line quickly in this game. You know, he's, he's a big fella, mm. but he's not shy in that starting position. And he's read it really well a couple of times when the ball's got played in behind, sometimes wide as well. And he's really come out early and dealt with it. I've been quite impressed with him. Yeah, it is amazing. Marcel van der Kram was saying to us before the game that he has played fewer club games in his career than Sillerson has played international games. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing. And for, and for the last nine seasons, I think it was, prior to this one, he'd only made 37 first-team appearances wherever he's been. He's now a regular number one at Heronvane in the Eredivisie. Yeah. But uh, it's classic Van Gaal, out of nowhere, practically. In, in fairness to him, though, like, from what I've seen on the eye, he doesn't look yeah. like he's that inexperienced, does he? He's, he's not. Good. Yeah, he, he's, he's making good decisions. They're early, they're positive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's spotted a few few goalkeepers before, hasn't he? He certainly has. De Jong suddenly picks up the pace, running through the heart of the Ecuadorian midfield, stopped in his tracks, handball as he fell from De Jong. Ecuador have taken the free kick quickly. De Jong nearly won it back. Layoff to the right-hand side, finds Caicedo. Caicedo's back heel. One back by the Netherlands. Oh, clever from De Jong, little back heel. Could see that coming from up here, but I think more <laughs> difficult to see down there. Blintz floated cross on the diagonal. Goalkeeper Ooh. comes, gives it a shout. Just in time, Galindez catches it. That must have been a big shout because the way that ball was 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 floating in there, if I was Hincapé, I think I'd, I'd have to have just dealt with that. That was a big risk for him to leave that ball. I know he had the shout, but sometimes when you're not too sure, just deal with it yourself and, and put it out of play. Torres. Jegson Mendes, the central midfielder, has dropped into the back line here, trying to play out. That's when Netherlands press. De Jong can't win it. Layoff looking for Mendes. Oh, he came flying in hard there on Gakpo. Gakpo takes a tumble. Must have got the ball because the challenge has been deemed OK. In a Valencia, who had that stinging right-footed shot, which forced Noppert into the save. One minute remaining in the first half. Five live on BBC Sounds. Netherlands 1, Ecuador 0. And Plata. Back heels the ball to Estrada. Estrada across to Valencia. He's got Dumfries in front of him. Can't get round him. Plays to Estepinian. Estrada on the stretch. Theatrical fall. Referee's not buying it. Play on, he says. It's Platter, actually, who made the fall. And now he's got to chase back because Dumfries is getting away down the right. Plays forward to Birkvine. Dumfries continues his run. 
Pass just in behind him. He's got it caught up between his feet. Trying to work his way round him. Capier holds him off, throwing Ecuador. I thought he should have just put that straight in behind for Bergvine. He was gesturing just to put it in the channel. And then I think he, he didn't get it early enough and had to adjust his run. But there's not been enough from the Dutch in terms of trying to get behind the Ecuadorian back three. Everything's been in front of them. They've never really got behind them once in this game. Louis van Gaal said ahead of this game, Depay's had his 30 minutes in the first one, he'd get 45 in the second. I mean, that would really make sense, I think, to get him on the field if they feel he's, he's ready to go. Ecuador attacking down the left. Estepinian, has he won a corner? No, the cross is deflected straight up in the air. Van Dijk chests it down on the half volley, just caresses a pass up to Bergwijn. He's off balance. He was pushed over, though, by Hincapier. Free kick for the Netherlands. Did I just see three minutes yes. additional... I know. What's going on? I know, we're feeling short Why is that not man. nine? I know. I <laughs> yeah, know. short change. <laughs> not enough football. No. That's um, got to be the shortest yet. Um, Has there been less than three? I think I've seen a one. Have you? No, I, I must have dreamt that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, okay, across to the left uh, to Blint. Four more World Cup commentaries coming your way tomorrow on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Tunisia, Australia at 10. Poland, Saudi Arabia at one. France against Denmark, which is a really good game at four. John Murray alongside Alan Shearer for that one. So Alan Shearer will be joining the five live team as Ecuador win a free kick late in this first half. And then Chris Sutton and I are lucky enough to be going to Argentina against Mexico tomorrow That'll night. Be good. That, is, that is a big, big game. Yeah, support-wise as well, the yeah. Mexicans. Yeah. I mean, I, I was at the, their first game and they just get the atmosphere bouncing. Yeah. yeah. That's huge. They're, two sets of fans are so passionate about their, their nation's fortunes. Obviously, Lionel Messi here, potentially at his last World Cup. Mexico always used to getting through the group stages and then in recent times, not further than that. But Argentina came in on this unbelievable unbeaten run and with expectations of winning the tournament. So that's seven o'clock tomorrow night. Free kick, whipped in by Estepinian to the far post. Valencia's up with the header. I think he might have won a corner there. Yep. How well do they time the jump as well? I mean, the ball comes in and they're, they're, they're very athletic. Valencia especially gets one or two strides on, on the opposition and just gets up really well, reads it well. I think he wins the initial header and he heads it down onto the back of a Dutch defender and it goes out for a corner. But every time there's a wide free kick or corner, you, you can tell that they set up really well and have a lot of belief that they're going to go and win the ball. Little bit of argy bargy with Moises Caicedo and Daly Blint inside the uh, the six yard box. Noppert is totally unflustered by that. I mean, he absolutely towers over Caicedo anyway, who's behind him. And then you've got this clutch of four or five of the Ecuadorians waiting to make these well timed runs and sort of using each other to to shield themselves from. Dutch defenders, corner comes in towards the near post, shot driven in, deflected, and in! It was Preciado's strike, it got a touch on the way through, Purvis Estupinian of Brighton and Hove Albion celebrates the goal right at the end of the first half, Ecuador have their equaliser or do they? The offside flag is up on field here, VAR will have a look and it may well be that that goal will not stand. Well, it's very hard to tell because there's so many bodies in that box, whether or not Esther Pinyan was in an offside position. It's a poor corner again, kind of scuffs it low, but it's certainly not Esther Pinyan who's in an offside position. But whether or not there's players interfering with play, well, well it's, it, it can't be Esther Pinyan. It's not, I'll tell you who that is, that's Perozo. Yeah. And, and the decision's been given, that goal doesn't stand. For me, Matt, Nopper is diving to his right and even though Perozo is in the way of the ball going in the goal, it doesn't touch him and he's not blocking it, Nopper. It, it's such a shame for them that he's in that position because he's having absolutely no effect on the outcome. Yeah. But that's the point, isn't the it? Play, I thought, well, yeah, you, I, I, I agree no with effect. you. There's, there's no effect on the outcome there whatsoever. Well, there we go. The half-time whistle blows and there is something to talk about. And the Ecuadorian players are right over the referee to have a word. VAR made the decision very quickly. Noppert had thrown himself to the right-hand side. Preciado had blasted the shot. Estepinian got the touch. Noppert already on his way down. Now, there's no doubt Perozo Matt, is in the offside position. Yeah. Doesn't touch the ball. Is he affecting, is he affecting play there? Well, he's right across. 
the goalkeeper's line of vision. Is he though? Because he's but gone. He's, the goalkeeper's gone. Exactly. He's already fallen to his yeah. right. So if he was there or not there, it wouldn't have changed anything. Exactly. It wouldn't have changed anything. But the facts are that he was there. So <laughs> they've just looked at it in that. They've interpreted it in that way, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. Decision made quickly. Yeah. Ecuador's players not happy, Ecuadorian fans not happy, and at half time, Kelly, Netherlands lead Ecuador by a goal to nil. Ali, thank you very much. I've not seen the replay just yet, but what I am watching are the furious and disappointed Ecuador players as they leave the field of play at the end of that first half. A big controversial moment to end the half. And I, I was going to ask you, Matt, about, about Netherlands in this. They're about to yep. become, or they were about to become, on track to become, the first team to qualify for the knockout stages of this World Cup. And now the question I was going to ask you is whether you think they've been particularly impressive or just competent. Uh they haven't been particularly impressive at all to me to be honest Kelly and I think if, if they had have done that if they go on and, and win this game then they'll probably be thinking well that was relatively straightforward we haven't really had to turn up and be the best version of ourselves that we can be and we're already through to the to the next stage so I, I think they lack real attacking consistency creativeness movement in those front two the ability to there's, there's loads of things for me that, that they're just not doing that well and I think that this game is far from over. It's been a bit dull at times in terms of the tempos just dropped right down. And whether or not Ecuador can keep pushing, they have these surges of play. And when the ball's wide, they love to cross the ball. It doesn't surprise me that that goal's come from a set play. So they're a real threat from that. But Holland, in terms of offering something going forward to Kelly, other than that moment of real brilliance from Gakpo, they've just, they've just had nothing. Thank you very much for now to Matthew Upson and Alistair Bruce Ball. We'll be back with them very shortly for the second half of Netherlands against Ecuador. Netherlands are 1-0 up after that controversial disallowed goal for Ecuador right at the end of the first half. We're keeping an eye on that from the Albate Stadium where England are all set to take on the USA. That game kicks off at 7 o'clock and there will, of course, be full commentary. We're going to start to build up to that after the BBC News with Richard Foster. Take the World Cup with you. Qatar 2022. On BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. A woman with Down syndrome has lost an appeal over laws allowing the abortion of babies with her condition up until birth. Heidi Crowther argued that parts of the Abortion Act amounted to discrimination. Emma Vogelman is a disability rights activist and she supports the law as it stands. There are a lot of extra costs associated with disability and I think for a parent the life that she would be facing is going to be so much more complex. I don't view it as a judgment on my life. Teachers in Scotland will strike on a further 16 days in January and February in a dispute about pay. Two local authorities will strike each day, meaning each pupil will miss only one day of school. Yesterday, nearly all schools in Scotland were shut due to industrial action. The Prime Minister is asking for the investigation into alleged bullying by Dominic Raab to be expanded to include a third formal complaint. Our political correspondent Jonathan Blake says there may be more allegations to come. The widening of this inquiry really reflects the mounting accusations which seem to be being made against Dominic Raab. Uh, there are further officials who are, are trying to get their complaints added to this investigation at the Department of Justice. At the moment, there are those three complaints uh, and that inquiry is underway. A potentially hazardous substance has been found on a body which was found on a street in Greater Manchester. It was discovered near Wigan at around 7 o'clock last night. Police are trying to work out who it is. The number of COVID infections in the UK is still falling. The Office for National Statistics estimates that around 970,000 people tested positive for the virus in the week to the 15th of November. That's down from 1.1 million in the previous seven days. And a shortage of computer chips means Jaguar Land Rover is reducing output at its factories in Solihull and Halewood until the spring. Prediction of the production of the Jaguar F-Pace and Land Rover Discovery Sport are likely to be affected. That's the news. Ellie has the travel. In the latest travel news, in Falkirk, the M80 southbound is partially blocked from junction 8 to 7 for Hags. That's because of an accident and there's long delays there of almost an hour at the moment. In Glasgow, the M8 eastbound, there's a lane blocked at junction 19 at Anderston Cross because of a broken down lorry. Congestion is to the Clyde Tunnel at 25. Delays there of 35 minutes. In South Yorkshire on the M180 eastbound, one lane is closed between Junction 1 and 2 for Gainsborough. That's because of an accident and traffic is really 
heavy along that stretch. And there's really heavy traffic in Bristol on the M5 southbound. One lane is closed between Junction 19 and 20 for Clevedon. There's been an accident there. The road is being cleared at the moment, but currently congestion is back to St. Brendan's roundabout at Junction 18. Delays of 45 minutes. Ellie Brennan, Five Live Travel. Hello and welcome to Cammy's Football Shorts with Cammy and just Cammy, not me. Oh, thanks, mate. Anyway, each week he's bringing you more tales of his extraordinary life and career. He doesn't need me getting in the way. My wife and I went to LA. She says to me, I want to do that tour bus around the stars' houses. He says, you probably won't know this guy. His name is Beanie Jonas. And I went, I know him. Think about it. Vinny Jones. <laughs> These bonus episodes are available. Just search for Proper Football on BBC Sounds. BBC Five Live. The FIFA World Cup. Qatar 2022 with Kelly Cates. Hello and welcome to the Albait Stadium where England are set to take on the USA. That one is a seven o'clock kickoff. At the moment, the Netherlands are facing Ecuador. They lead by a goal to nil at halftime. We'll be back at the Khalifa International Stadium for the second half very shortly. Also in Group A, host Qatar are on the verge of a World Cup exit after back-to-back -back defeats. They lost 3-1 to Senegal earlier on. Wales suffered a cruel blow, two added time goals meant that Iran won the game by two goals to nil. It leaves Rob Page's side bottom of the group ahead of Tuesday evening's game against England. It's not all loss for Wales, though. It is still possible, just extremely difficult for them to qualify for the knockout stages. And Five Live will, of course, have commentary of that game, which kicks off at seven o'clock on Tuesday. Brazil players Neymar and Danilo are out until at least the end of the group stage. That's according to their team doctor, and you'd think he'd know. Both players have ankle injuries. So welcome then to the Albate Stadium as England take on the USA. Full commentary, as I say, from 7 o'clock. England could qualify for the next round with a win tonight. Here's the England manager, Gareth Southgate. Take the World Cup with you. Qatar 2022. On BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. If you could choose the last two tournaments we've been qualified after two matches and it's allowed us to do other things but you've also got to accept that the first objective is to get out of the group and we said at the start we've got three matches to do that and if it takes us three and we've got to go to the well I was going to say the 90th minute but it's probably the 135th minute of the third game then um, you've got to be prepared to go the distance so we, of course, would like to get that done, but we play a very good opponent and they've got their own motivations and they're going to make life very difficult for us. The general mood this week after winning well in the first match, what's it done? Yeah, good. Uh, uh, I mean, I think since the, the boys came together, there's been a very good vibe, for uh, want of a better word, than uh, uh, around the group. Of course, when, whenever you win a game, the emotional state of the team changes. You've got players who've played, players who've, who have come into the game and have scored, so they're, they're particularly high and you've got to try to bring them back to where they were before the game. You've got players who haven't played, who have got the motivation to push for a place. So nothing ever stays the same within a, a group unless you work really hard at it. And that's what we've tried to focus on as well as tactically preparing for this game. That was Gareth Southgate talking to John Murray, who is your commentator for this evening here at the Albate Stadium, alongside Rob Green, and we're also joined by former USA midfielder Stuart Holden. Stuart, we'll get your thoughts on, on this game in just a second, but Rob, you were in the stadium for the 6-2 win for England over Iran. Yep. We know that Gareth Southgate doesn't like to make changes. I think the most mm. overused stat in the build-up to this game is the fact that he hasn't named unchanged sides since 2018 World Cup. Might he do it tonight for continuity? I think he will. I think it, tactically it lends itself to it. And also, just in terms of how they played, they found the answers against Iran. They played very, very well going forward. But more importantly, I think the focus tonight will be on that back four, the two centre-halves in there, and just saying, right, let's just tighten it up, let's just get that bit right. Look, we had a free-flowing, wonderful game of football against a fairly passive Iran side in the, in the first game. You very much doubt it's going to be the same today. So, emphasis on getting it right at the back. And what we know is this USA side has so much pace, so much energy and youth in, in that team, Stuart. 
In terms of possible tweaks that they could make, there's a lot of calls for Gio Reyna to come into the starting lineup. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think we'll... First of all, hi guys, great to see you. Hi. Uh, we'll be on opposite sides of the aisle today. I, I don't think we'll see Gio Reyna from the start. There's question marks about his fitness, and I think for a game which I expect to be played at a very high intensity against England. And uh, Rob, to your point, I don't, I don't think we'll see that for the United States. Iran set off. England made it far too easy for them. So much possession, so much time on the ball. And I think the word out of US camp is, let's get up and press. We do have a young team. We have a team that's full of energy when you think about our midfield, which I think is our strength. Tyler Adams, who plays at Leeds, Eunice Musa, a very good player as well, and Weston McKenney, who plays at Juventus. And I think you'll see the US step up. So I'm interested to see how England will play out of the back and can solve some of that pressure. But they do. If they can play through the US's midfield, they're going to have tons of space in behind. The way that you put it there, it just doesn't lend itself to Gio Reyna playing at yes, all, does it? absolutely, yeah. It's also a huge weekend of sport in the US because it was Thanksgiving yesterday. <laughs> We've got this game here tonight. But what I have noticed is a, a level of interest that's coming through, certainly on social media. I saw that in Dallas, the crowd were chanting USA at the NFL game to try and kind of support the US men's national team. They've, they've been a little bit of, um, I don't know, poking fun on the US men's <laughs> national team Twitter account saying this is the highlight of Thanksgiving weekend of, of sport. But just because everybody is at home and able to watch this, it just gives it that bit, bit of an extra edge. Yeah, we, I'm working with Fox Sports now in the United States, and we truly believe that this will be the highest rated men's soccer match of all time in our country. We've been talking about it since the draw came out. Rob and I were part of the game in 2010, 12 years ago. Sorry to bring that up, Rob. But this is the game that every player and coach and every fan has pinpointed as the big one because we feel this is one of our most exciting generations of young players. And how do you test yourself? Well, against one of the best teams, a team that England that has been to a semi-final of a World Cup, the final of the Euros. And I think we all believe and know that this is the best team in the group. And I'm excited personally as a fan, but also a former player to see how this young team can now stack up against some of the best players in the world. And with that being such a young side, such an athletic side, general noise out of the camp is this is for four years time when you are hosting and when you're thinking this experience will put them in good stead is that the general plan i, I think that's the you know the conservative one i think it's probably the more realistic one but you know the, the romantic side of me thinks that, that this young group is ready to take that next step and this is the game again that we're all looking at and saying well maybe can we this is the game that you know, Pulisic needs to be a star, and he's played a bit of a role play at Chelsea recently, and we don't really have a Harry Kane. We don't have a number nine striker. We don't have a Raheem Sterling. We don't have some of the talent, I think, that England possesses, and these guys are on the cusp of that. So is this a learning experience for them, potentially for 26? I hope not. I hope that we show up and we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with England and prove that it's not about four years, it's it's really about now. Norwich City fans might take offense to <laughs> you saying there's no number nine. Josh Sargent has played up front from scored some goals this season, so there's someone there. It, Christian Pulisic, of course, a player that really sort of sparked a new generation of, of interest and excitement in that, that US men's national team. But ahead of this game, what I found really interesting, Stu, by the way, Rob, I did notice you skipping over the reference to 2010. We might be He's a bit less, the, bit less kind later to on. It today. We, <laughs> we, might, we might go into detail on that a little bit later on. But in terms of, of this evening's match, what I've, I've been really interested in is how many questions have been asked from a US perspective on what do England think of us? How do they see this game? There is still that kind of almost a big brother, little brother kind of relationship. Yeah, so I, I, I am curious to that effect. I heard Gareth Southgate on the sound you guys played coming in. He talks about the respect for opponent. I don't think he's going to say, although I have seen other journalists and pundits and former players saying that they expect this to be a pretty comfortable win for England. I don't see it that way, but I might have red, white and blue lenses on right now. <laughs> Well, what do you think, Robert? Do you think there's an, a danger of underestimating the US in this one? Or do you think that England will be well aware of any threat that they can pose? I think you look at that first game against Wales and how they caught them really cold. And it, just that opening game. And you can see on the players that they were so fast out of the blocks and such a high press and so aggressive off the ball that Wales didn't have an answer in that first half until they changed it up and brought Keeper Moore on. So I think they've really very quickly learn and I think from that you turn around and say look professional football is at the top top level learn during games what they also do is watch the other games and know the ins and outs they won't take this lightly 
Rob Green, part of our commentary team here at the Albert Stadium this evening. We'll be hearing more from him later and we will ask him about that match in 2010. Don't worry about it. Stuart Holden, thank you so much for coming luck, over to guys. talk to us. Good luck. Crossing the divide in the commentary box here at the Albert Stadium. So kickoff in this one is at seven o'clock. Netherlands leading Ecuador by a goal to nil. Let's head back there and join Matthew Upson and Alistair Bruce Ball. Thank you, Kelly. Teams just making their way back onto the field here. Netherlands, as it stands, heading through to the last 16. England fans, Wales fans will want to keep an eye on this group as well. The winners of this group, Group A, will meet the runners-up in the England and Wales group. The runners-up in this group meet the winners of that group that contains England and Wales. As we expected, Matt Upson, change at half-time. Memphis, Louis van Gaal told us, he said, 30 minutes in the first game, Depay's going to get 45 minutes in the second game. Here he is, Memphis Depay on and seemingly enjoying himself because the first thing he's done is walk to the middle of the pitch and put both feet on the ball and just stand tall on it. Well, he probably needs a little bit of height on that ball. He's not the tallest <laughs> he's of, not. of players, but he certainly looks very strong. I was watching him warm up. Real powerful legs, hasn't he? And I think they'll benefit from someone like him, maybe. They weren't quite cutting enough in that first half where they Bergvijn didn't really stamp his authority on the game or get anything in behind the Ecuadorians so maybe Depay bring a little bit more life to that front line yeah Louis van Gaal is gently easing him back into action that substitution just being announced on the Tannoy which is booming around the Khalifa International Stadium because before the substitute appearance against Senegal on match day one at this World Cup his last appearance for Barcelona was back in mid-September has had a hamstring problem they're being extremely careful with him you think they are going to get through this group they're probably going to get through as group winners and he's going to be massively important to them uh, as they go through this tournament uh, so Andres Noppert in goal Jurian Timber Virgil van Dijk Nathan Ake the three centre-backs Denzel Dumfries and Daly Blint the wing-backs Tayun Copeminers Frankie de Jong in central mid field with Davy Klassen as the number 10 now playing behind Cody Gakpo the goal scorer and Memphis Depay little flick pass there from Angelo Preciado has hit the referee so that'll be a drop ball it'll come back to Ecuador they're feeling a little hard done by they had the ball in the back of the Dutch net just before halftime ruled out for offside because their centre-back Jackson Perozo was in an offside position whether he was actually affecting play and in the goalkeeper's eye Nopper had already thrown himself to the right hand side to try and save the shot that Estupinian then deflected past him uh, that is the debate they were having as the players marched into the tunnel challenge on Caicedo free kick to Ecuador they, they need to try and sort of pick up Matt immediately where they, they sort of left as you said in the first half they just played in spells didn't they Ecuador yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like spurts of pressure and movement and when they run off the ball or when they do something it's with real purpose isn't it they've got they've got quite an energy and physicality about them as a free kick now from deep just inside the Dutch half and nearly everyone's forward and the ball's going right in the box Esther Pinion puts absolutely everything into that real sort of vicious dip and spin on the ball it's headed away and there's another ball coming in straight away from Plata towards the full post and that's Estupinian I think who's attacking it on the far side Noppert loves those those when he sees those from a long way off he's got yeah. that height advantage and he comes out and grabs it yeah there was a, the ball's in the air a long time it was floated towards that back part of the 18 yard box but I mean he's come a long way Noppert and it looks very comfortable and confident he almost takes it like really it's quite laid back isn't mm. he for somebody that's so inexperienced he doesn't look on edge at all Oh, looks very comfortable, very confident. Ecuador, Hernan Galindez in goal. Jackson Perozo, the animal. Felix Torres, we've called Stripe, and Piero Hincapié. Their three centre-backs. Angelo Preciado, right wing back. Estupinian on the left-hand side. Gonzalo Plata, Jackson Mendes, and Moises Caicedo as a midfield three with Michael Estrada and Enna Valencia, the skipper. Ecuador's a record goal scorer up front throwing for Ecuador on the right inside their own half they're in dark blue kits which contrasts with the bright yellow Ecuador shirt that we can see all around the stadium white shorts white socks playing from left to right in the second half as we look down I mean the only thing that Nopper doesn't have on his body that isn't lime luminous green are his gloves aren't yes I mean, he's got the boots socks kit and a lot yeah totally totally and you can't even I think I think he's a socks over the knees fella so you can't even see flesh there <laughs> uh, Nopper might almost get caught in possession there just clears in time with his left foot under pressure balls loose inside the Dutch half Frankie de Jong there short little pass stabbed to his right Ecuador win it they're hungry Plata plays it to his left hand side Estupinian hits the shot Nopper saves rebound stuck in and this time the flag stays down and Ecuador have their equaliser guess who 
Ella Valencia scores again for Ecuador. Six World Cup goals in a row for his country. The substitutes come rushing off the bench to celebrate. VAR will check the offside. But goodness me, that man has done so much for his country. Netherlands won, Ecuador won. Well, that is nothing more than what they deserve from this game so far. They had one disallowed just before half-time. But the moment this ball gets turned over in the middle, it was a brilliant piece of midfield play. I'm not too sure if it was Mendes or Casado who wins the initial tackle. I'll have to have a look on the replay, but it's a brilliant tackle. And the ball just pops out wide. And all of a sudden, there's a little 1v1 situation. Van Dijk stayed inside the 18-yard box. He didn't come too far out. I'm having a quick look at the replay now. It comes loose into the pitch. It's a brilliant tackle. It pops back out into the wide area. But from then on, the shot goes in. It's a decent save from Noppart. Parries it out, but he can do nothing with the player Valencia following in. Left foot shot across the box. It's low. He can't really do too much more with it other than guide the ball a bit further wide. The, the, the replays I've seen as well in line with the defender. I'm sure Ake's playing him onside. The goal's given. VAR's checked it. We're back on. Netherlands won, Ecuador won. Enna Valencia, six World Cup goals in a row for his country, equals the record in World Cup history. Other players who've done that for their country, Eusebio, the great Eusebio of Portugal, the great Paolo Rossi of Italy, and Oleg Selenko. It's a little bit passive of the Dutch as well, didn't you find, when, and, you know, that, that ball broke out wide, the turnover in the middle of the park, but all of a sudden, it's like they're not getting out and being physical. He's just kind of dropping off all the time. And it was just, it just seemed a little bit easy there for Ecuador once that, that midfield tackle was won. If the game finishes as a draw, Qatar are out. They will be out of the World Cup. Ecuadorian goalkeeper Galindez gets his clearance away just in time. So that's really set us up very nicely for the second half here. This is your hors d'oeuvre third commentary of the day on five live on bbc sounds because next up from seven o'clock this evening kick off england usa in group b england's second game in the tournament full commentary on the way nice passing from the dutch Klaassen to his left hand side here's depai depai steps inside perozo looks for a little flick pass into the box no one there in a, a bright orange shirt to get on the end of it ake jumps to win a header nods it into estrada and that'll be a throw in to the Netherlands so you'll have the Netherlands on four points Ecuador on four points Senegal on three points and Qatar on no points so even if Qatar were to beat the Netherlands they'd only get to three they couldn't catch the Netherlands or Ecuador so they will be out before even playing their final game listen to that all of a sudden from yeah. nowhere that's brilliant there's a lot of yellow shirts bouncing up and down isn't there in the stadium Seven minutes gone, ball over the top towards Depay, Torres challenges him, nods it away, and Perozo can't keep it in play. Sliding in, trying to clear with his right foot before it got across the byline, so the Netherlands have a corner. So they've conceded their first goal of this World Cup. Enna Valencia already has three to his name. Well, he's gone through fire today, isn't he, <laughs> Valencia? That's what his manager said he'd do. He he was taking some, some knocks in the opening game against Qatar and did look in real trouble with his knee at one point, yeah. but he's out there. Well, he's on fire, isn't he? He certainly is. Gakpo with the corner, curled into the edge of the six-yard box. Ake jumps, couldn't get a header on it. Blint chases it out oh, to well the played. right. What a lovely flick to release Estepinian. Estepinian's got Plata running ahead of him. He's challenged, though, by Cope Miners, throwing for Ecuador. We've got a game on our hands, I think, Matt. We have. That was Mendes there, just spun and just a lovely little back heel really cheeky but it is game on but if, if I'm honest I'm looking at Ecuador thinking yeah. well they're, they're in the in the driving seat at the moment absolutely Ake to his left finds De Jong De Jong gives it back to Ake Ake whips it out to the left low pass to Pies on the move if Blink can find him Blink curls the ball he tries to curl it around Perozo Perozo leaps and heads it out for a throw yes strange choice of pass there from Blink with his left foot I thought he just played that more straighter down the channel just into the space he Tried to clip it actually direct into the pipe. He, he, he gave Barroso more of a chance. Yeah, absolutely. To intercept it, yeah. it was going to be intercepted. Whereas, you know, the amount of times he'd, he's had a ball on this channel daily blimp with that left foot, he can just spin that right down the line and almost curl it into the channel. And he, he didn't opt to do that. He tried to play it directly to the pipe and it got cut out easily. 
Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1. So Netherlands stung into life a little bit at the start of the second half. Timber plays to his right. Ball with the outside of the left foot looking for Gakpo. Gakpo down by the byline on the right, wants a corner. Decision goes against him, exasperated. He throws both hands to his head. Can't believe he didn't get it. We'll have a look on the replay. It looked the right decision from Moraim. I'm not too sure if there is any contact from the Ecuadorian player. It was Casado. As I look at the replay of the goal, Moises Casado with the tackle in midfield, very much like him, wasn't it? I mean, they snap into those situations. The Ecuadorian two in the middle, Mendes and Casado. I mean, any loose ball, or they they just anticipate those challenges really well. There's there's not too much more Nopper could have done there could he I mean that he got down well actually to make the save I know yeah. sometimes we talk about sort of palming it away away from goal but it was just instinctive I, wasn't I it I think it was a hard position for him because it was quite close to his feet and it was low and when you're such a tall man getting down quickly around your ankles down there just getting there and stopping the ball is your primary objective yes. and then where it pops out to you're kind of powerless really yeah, you're speaking to the wrong guy there Matt as you know well you, you obviously know what it's like to, <laughs> to have to get down low from such a tall height Ali <laughs> throwing on the right <laughs> for Ecuador 1-1 one, one in Group A fascinating group now Senegal winners earlier on today against Qatar by three goals to one so they've got their three points Netherlands and Ecuador will both be on four points going into the final group games if this game finishes level can Eno Valencia get a seventh World Cup goal let's wait and see Preciado chasing the ball down the right couldn't catch it tried to get the cross in goes behind for a goal kick to the Netherlands Van Dijk's frustrated smashes the ball away into the stands which is which is some effort actually because that, that is a big old hoop you've got to give it to <laughs> to clear the uh, the area surrounding the pitch to get it into the stands here I, I like the body language of the Ecuadorians mm. as well there's a real bounce about them the whole game is it there I think it's very contrasting to the Dutch if anything I look at the Dutch they look a little bit laid back for me and, and that's fine and being controlled and being calm in possession all that but every now and then there's got to be a bit more edge to your play Depay lets the ball run across his body couldn't keep it Mendes plays it forward to Caicedo Estrada takes it off him looking for Valencia might run to Caicedo oh. Cor, Mendes flying into the back of Depay <laughs> Netherlands won't like that Gakpo's done really well to keep his feet there being chased by a whole host of opponents there he's brought down free kick for the Netherlands Depay's on his feet and the Netherlands little bit unhappy about some of the treatment they're receiving but that 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 is exactly yeah, what you're just saying Matt. absolutely Mendes and Casado exactly again in that center circle area they are snapping into tackles any loose ball in fact it doesn't have to be a loose ball if anyone's in possession of it they're just hunting it down Chiche the Brazilian head coach was was oh, there's a yellow card gone up there who's that for there you go I'll put you on the spot I'll tell you what I'm going to wait for it to appear on the screen and then, <laughs> and then I'll tell you he said that he fancied Ecuador could be one of the surprise packages now he would know because obviously his Brazilian team yeah have, have, have faced them in qualifying I think Ecuador drew against them at home it's um, Mendes Mendes which is a shame because yeah. whether or not that'll take an edge off his play I mean he's probably had a few opportunities yeah I think it was Mendes anyway Jackson Mendes it is it's for the tackle on, on Memphis Depay gets the booking and will miss the next game and will miss the next game now that is a shame Ecuador yeah. against Senegal is a big one in this group that is a shame he's been excellent and was booked yeah it he's, was booked. he's got a nice little partnership in there with Casado yeah that is a real shame for him and for the Ecuadorian team free kick is taken swung into the Ecuador penalty area Mendes is, is immediately there again though to knock it back to Preciado long ball over the top chased by Plata covered by Timber that is over on the left hand side and knocks the ball out no it's Gakpo I beg your pardon yeah. Gakpo is back there doing the defending plays in the MLS as well Mendes doesn't he yeah Gareth Bale teammate yeah for Los Angeles FC and Uncle Edison is an Ecuadorian legend having been part of the team in the 2002-2006 World Cup right. 2006 they got through the group stages met England in the last 16 and David Beckham whipped in a free kick and, and knocked them out but um, but yes he comes from a famous footballing family and the other little fact I've got for you on Angel Preciado Angelo Preciado has taken that throw collects trainers now, as apparently has an astonishing collection of trainers that's, and, that's a nice thing to collect well exactly it's Preciado oh look at that dancing in front of the ball couple of step overs gets the cross in though oh good Ooh. hit from Valencia edge of the box blocked Plata oh it's hit the bar 
come down to Valencia still inside the Dutch penalty area with his right foot tries to get the cross in the ball's pinging around and Van Dijk is eventually there to tidy it up goodness me two chances there for Ecuador to go in front the first shot hit with real power that was blocked and then the one coming off the bar well Ecuador absolutely peppering the Dutch goal at the moment they just can't deal with him the intensity the pace lovely first strike from Valencia and the left footed effort there off the crossbar and down onto the floor brilliant strike from Plata nowhere near it Norper, no matter how tall he is he couldn't get his hand anywhere near that that was flying into the top corner I think Valencia's strike before that that led, led to that second strike might have been heading in for the bottom maybe, corner as well maybe it was close I mean he didn't know it was it Van Dijk it struck he yeah, didn't know Van anything Dijk. about it he was no. just standing still just hit him straight in the shin but it, it, it's those little moments and, and they're really intense aren't they they're like quite frantic yeah but they're effective Copeman is playing to the right-hand side. Dumfries can't get past Estupinian. Copeman is there to help out. Still wide on the right, looking to get a crossing. Can he win a corner for the Netherlands? No, Ecuador have kept that in play. And it's eventually gone out for a throw. Now, Ecuador, you'd say, have the harder final group game because they are up against Senegal. Netherlands, I think, would feel more comfortable against Qatar. So were Ecuador to win this, I think Netherlands would probably feel, well, you know, we'll take three points from Qatar. We'll end up on, on six. Ecuador, if they win this, would be on six looking at this game now if you were England who would you rather play if England were to finish Netherlands. top Netherlands would you I think so yeah, yeah because, I, I because, think I think because of the intensity of, of Ecuador and how much they yeah, they I, seem to I, want I, it I think I agree with you Gakpo's down doesn't get the free kick the free kick goes the other way and this game at the moment is going Ecuador's way they have equalised through Enna Valencia Netherlands won Ecuador won Netherlands getting frustrated and het up a lot of high fives knocking about here for Ecuador. Mm. They're a proper good, team, good team spirit, Real team, aren't they, man? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So their free kick, Galindez, the goalkeeper, wants to take it from inside his penalty area. He's going to be moved over a little to his left-hand side. Hour and forty minutes away, if I'm doing my maths correctly, from England against the USA. Full commentary on the way here. Five live on BBC Sounds. You don't need to miss a second. If you've got something to do this evening, head out in the car for 10 minutes. BBC Sounds on your device will have you covered. You won't need to miss a moment. John Murray, Rob Green, Michael Richards, all part of the team. Ball inside the Netherlands penalty area. Blint's clearance hits Preciado. Preciado can't keep it in. Has a swing at the ball behind the goal line just to waste a bit of time. And then goes tearing back down that touchline to get in position. But already Nopper has got the game. Uh, back underway 606 tonight as well to discuss all the football from today Wales fans you may well want your say as well on what turned out to be a very disappointing game in the early kickoff today Wales nil uh, Iran 2-2 two, two late goals for Iran in that one just after Wayne Hennessy was sent off so Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage taking the calls and all the reaction all the debate all the analysis as always uh, in your must listen World Cup daily podcast and Matt sitting here on my right you're on breakfast duty tomorrow aren't you I am breakfast duty tomorrow yes with Rick Edwards ahead of our four commentaries that's so correct six o'clock in the UK uh, Rick with Matt Peter Schmeichel and from the Welsh point of view Danny Gavadon uh, is going to be on the show as well De Jong on the ball for the Netherlands who need to try and match the intensity of their opponents De Jong is just drifting into his own half here plays it to Van Dijk gives it back to De Jong they've worked the space nicely Coke Miners brings it forward in the inside left channel good noise inside the stadium as Blint finds Depay Depay is about 35 yards from goal central position works it onto his right foot low pass to Gakpo tries to get it back to Depay and couldn't get the shot away on the edge of the box Torres clears bounces back to him he heads it away Mendes with a header forward flicked on by Plata chased by Estrada this could be interesting Estrada against Van Dijk cool as you like Van Dijk deals with it he just felt Estrada wanted to get that ball in right into the space didn't he I think he'd really fancy himself if the ball went 10 yards over the top of Van Dijk there Depay with a little flick and turn can't collect the ball Hincapier happy to go long here thumps the ball downfield Timber jumps nods the ball into Valencia Valencia now one-on-one -on -one with Timber into the penalty area Dumfries back to try and help out runs to Estrada no power on the shot just dribbles into the arms of Noppert I tell you what they've got a real knack of pe picking people out in the box as well when they're wide that ball from Valencia is really clever he gets his head up he uses his left foot and he just pulls it back just beyond the penalty spot and if it had been a better strike there from Estrada gets no confidence with his left foot to really hit that ball I was right Eric Estrada just found him 
<laughs> Poncherello. <laughs> the pitcher. I'm delighted about it. <laughs> exactly. Do you remember Chips? I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, Chips. They were the Californian it's Highway Patrol. It's a you know, little, on, it's on a little bit kind of karate kid, Daniel LaRusso. Yeah, yeah, the, with the, the hair. Big, the big, oh, yeah. Proper hair 80s does. hair, yeah. yeah. Some listeners will know what I'm talking about. I, I don't know what programme you're talking about there. <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. They were, they were two cops on bikes. Ponch, or, Poncherello or and John. Push bikes or motorbikes. No, bikes. come on. They're the highway patrol. Cool, cooler than that. Proper mo Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Plays to Depay. 25 minutes to go in this game. Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1. De Jong. Forward to Ake. Ake in the middle of the Ecuadorian half. Jackson Mendes is just going to leave him alone. He's not going to go in for any unnecessary challenges. He's on the yellow card. And he's already missing that next game. Big game for Ecuador against Senegal. And that's a misplaced pass from Dumfries. Which is getting the boos, the jeers and the whistles. As Netherlands build again from inside their own half. Van Dijk. Cross to Ake, still quite slow from the Netherlands. I mean, you've seen a couple of little things from Depay, haven't you? Just that moment there where he popped it in, got it back, nearly got a shot off. You, you can see that he looks a bit, you know, sharper with the ball and more mm. creative, but they've not really improved much in this second half. Flint to class and Gakpo on the turn edge of the box, lays it back and the shot goes flying over the bar from Cope Miners. Now that was nicely worked, good football. The finish just wasn't there. It was a poor finish, wasn't it? Like I say, nice build-up, clever little layoff onto the left foot of Cope Miners, but he just never looked comfortable at all. Didn't strike the ball with any conviction, leaning back. It, I mean, look how far wide that was. You see how far wide that then? It yeah. was miles oh. off. Other sport to look out for uh, on Five Live this weekend. Boxing 10-15 uh, tomorrow night. Dillian White against Jermaine Franklin. At Wembley, got full commentary on that one. The ball's gone behind for an Ecuador goal kick here during our World Cup coverage uh, tomorrow. We'll keep you updated on the uh, the latest autumn internationals in the Rugby Union. Wales against Australia, England against South Africa. A couple of big games well worth catching up with the Rugby Union weekly on the BBC Sounds app uh, to, to whet the appetite for those games. And five FA Cup second round commentaries over the weekend on Radio 5 Sports Extra. FA Cup second round seems a weird thing to be talking about when you're sitting It watching, really does, yeah. Watching the Netherlands against Ecuador in the, in the World Cup. It's 1-1. Van Dijk's let for a header. Free kick is, is given to Van Dijk, even though it's Estrada who's flat on his back, who's, who's come off worse in the battle. So Van Dijk needs to... Uh, needs to rally the troops uh, a bit here, but it's, it's very similar, very similar to the, to the first game that that I saw against Senegal and the strange thing is Matt because I've not watched masses of them live under under Van Gaal but they're unbeaten since Van Gaal returned as national team manager scoring loads of goals yeah um, but it, it's just a bit sluggish it here. is a, a lot of promising talk about the Dutch coming into the tournament wasn't there that they've you know they've spent quite a few years you know in the shadows really haven't they rebuilding the team and and trying to get back some of that that quality that they've had in past teams but I'm not seeing it here no. at all and, and you talk about the, the the fight that we've seen on the pitch there and, and the battle well Ecuador for me coming out on top of most of most of those duels and that's one of the most disappointing things about the Dutch performance it's just not enough edge to it for me midway through the second half former England international Matt Upson with us here on five live and BBC sounds in Doha Netherlands won, Ecuador won, and this Group A is finally poised. Netherlands have won a throw on the left. I think the Dutch are getting ready to make another change. Depay came on at half-time. He's involved here. He gets the ball from Blint. Not the best pass back from Blint. So Perozo was able to win it back for Ecuador. Played forward to Estrada. Plata making the run down the right and Ooh. couldn't control the pass. He stretched. It's gone beyond him. It's gone out for a throw to the Netherlands. But Plata with the, the shot off the crossbar. Valencia with the shot blocked by Van Dijk. Here is Van Dijk, striding forward, stops, plays it to his left to De Jong. De Jong is walking, he's got no movement whatsoever ahead of him. You can see all the orange shirts, they're all stood totally still. Van Dijk plays low to his right, here's Timber. Timber's got Dumfries ahead of him, wide on the right. I mean, you see none of Dumfries going up and down no. that, that right-hand no. side. None of the energy, the drive. We've seen plenty of it from, from Ecuador. The way they've ran off the ball into space very unselfish how they've played they just as a team we mentioned earlier as a team they just look better 
collectively, don't they, in terms of that they're working really hard for each other. Uh, Stephen Burkhouse is coming on and Davy Klassen is, is coming off. So that's the change for the Netherlands. Depay is already on. I don't know about you, Matt. I don't mind them when they sort of do one every 10 minutes and you can get your head around. It's when they do yeah. four at a time. Can you manage that? That one's OK. I've got You've that. Got that Berghouse one. That's in the back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When there's a three and then a two, three the two, then it gets a bit messy. That's right. Throwing up towards the halfway line. Valencia brings it down on his thigh. De Jong in quickly on him. Torres tries to clear for Ecuador. The ball bounces loose inside their half. Mendes there first. Hungry. Wins the header on the bounce. Wins the next header as well. De Jong blocks it. Torres flexes the neck muscles and powers a header forward. Van Dijk clears it with his head. Caicedo just pushes a ball down the left for Plata to chase. Estupinian is down and just sorting out his, his left boot at the moment. By the way, if you haven't heard, the news we got just ahead of kickoff in this one... Uh, not good news for the tournament, actually. Neymar, we've heard, is out for the group stages of the World Cup. So Brazil, having won their opening game, have uh, got games against uh, Switzerland and Cameroon in their group. And Neymar will not feature, we hear, in, in either of those. But they'll hope he's back for the knockout stages. Here's Gakpo. Plays to his right. Cope Miners. Infield to Gakpo. Gakpo with his right foot just prods it forward. Bit of wrestling there between Dumfries and Hincapié. Ball comes in from the right. But great, great pressure, isn't it, from Ecuador? I mean, they're just like swarm over those orange shirts when they're in those situations. They physically really do get after it. Yeah, Netherlands couldn't find a way through, and in the end, Gakpo just shoves Estepinian in the back, and that, that was out of sheer frustration. Chasing him, couldn't catch him, knocks him over, and that'll be a free kick to Ecuador, who've been the better team. They have. I mean, look at the attempts on goal. If I look at your little stat screen there, I mean, there's a significant difference in terms point. of... The attempts on goal from Ecuador are miles ahead. Yeah, total attempts on goal from the Netherlands, two. One goal scored, 11 yeah. from Ecuador. So those are on, those are on target, on aren't target, they? One on yeah. target, three on target. Yeah. 1-1, yeah. one, one. Netherlands, Ecuador. Van Dijk wants more, whirling his hand around in possession of the ball. Doesn't see an option forward. Plays it back here to his goalkeeper, Noppert. Gives it straight back to Van Dijk. The Ecuadorian front three just stand off him. Plays forward here to Burkhouse. Burkhouse on the turn in midfield. Curls the ball with his left foot to Blint. That's difficult to control. He can't control it. Goes out for a throw. Is it difficult to control or am I being a bit kind to Daly Blint? No, I don't think it was a great ball. Um, it was behind him. It skipped up in front of him. So it's kind of bouncing up around your knee. It came off his shin, didn't it? I mean, yeah. but that says a bit about the performance. There's not been a lot of zip to this performance at all, has there? No. Scored in the eighth minute, Cody Gakpo got it. And that came from a loose ball just outside the penalty area. Netherlands worked it brilliantly and the shot was an absolute screamer. But since then it's been very much Ecuador's game. And the ball now has gone behind for a, for a Netherlands goal kick. So we are into the last 20 minutes here. Then we'll have last bit of build-up to England's second game at this tournament. They're up against the USA. Full commentary from 7 o'clock UK time. Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage taking the calls after the game for an uh, hour tonight from 10 o'clock this evening. So game kicks off at, at 7. Obviously go through until about 9 o'clock. Then you've got all the, uh, the post-match reaction. And then Chris and Robbie will take the calls on 6.06 from 10 until 11. Here come Ecuador down the left. Cross in. Headed away for now by Van Dijk. Caicedo brings it down, tries to get the shot away. Ball loose outside the Dutch penalty area. Possibly a chance to break for Dumfries. And Capier's got it covered. Dumfries, did he catch him? No. Just throw him for the Netherlands. Yeah, I think Hincapier saw the contact coming and went down a little bit easy. But got, it's clearly it offside. Offside. Miles offside. Yeah. The Bayes played well, Gakpo in. Gakpo's going to miss it anyway. <laughs> And the flag goes I mean, up. he was so far on. offside. How can he not have just put his flag up there early? I don't get that. Ten yards? The tight one, it was that far. Ten yards it was that side, far. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It was so far that Poncharello and John would have struggled to catch up <laughs> on their bikes <laughs> by the time that Gakpo hit the shot. Jeremy Sarmiento, another Brighton player, uh, coming into the action. Good to see him in action because he has struggled with injuries uh, since joining Brighton just 20 years old couple of substitute appearances in the Premier League this season this is 11th cap for his country and he comes on for Michael Estrada 
So, 17 minutes to play. Gets a massive hug, Estrada, from his manager. Put a shift in, I think the phrase goes. And it absolutely epitomised the spirit that all these Ecuadorian players have shown in this game uh, this evening. Netherlands won. Ecuador won. Free kick Ecuador for the offside. Hernan Galindez gets ready to take. Fires it downfield, high into the night sky. Van Dijk gets up early, wins the header, falls over the back of Enner Valencia, ends up in a crumpled heap on the floor. But the free kick does belong to the Netherlands. Van Dijk takes it. 16 minutes to go. Blint down the left. Looking for Berghaus. Berghaus is not going to beat Perozo and then drags Perozo down. That'll be a free kick for Ecuador. I don't know whether the fact the final game is against Qatar has sort of means that the Netherlands, I don't know, subconsciously feel more comfortable. Louis van Gaal doesn't seem overly stressed sitting on that bench. His son's out as well, isn't it? Yeah. Van Gaal, well, that's, yeah. Ball cleared by... Uh, by Galindez down the right hand side header one by Ake there's Mendez plays it to his right and Platter's never going to catch that that was a clearance more than a pass down the right hand touchline it goes behind for a goal kick and the game's got a little bit scrappy and untidy uh, attendance figures just come up on the big screen 44,833 inside the Khalifa International Stadium and the capacity here is it, it, I've heard like mixed capacities yeah. It's kind of moved around the, a the little The capacities bit. have been revised, I think, Matt, yeah. since, since the tournament started. Uh, it's the best way that I would yeah. I would put that, because I think we had close to 90,000 in the uh, in the La Salle Stadium for the Brazilian game last night, and it did look like that, and it did it did certainly feel like that. It was a real atmosphere yeah. uh, in there. Uh, Berghaus on the ball for the Netherlands, just inside Ecuador's half. Timber plays across the halfway line to De Jong like him to be a little more influential if, yeah. if possible get a bit further up the look at me trying to tell it's, Louis van Gaal well, what to do with this team. they've just not had enough impact on the game the creative players that that the Dutch have just haven't really been able to, to get that foothold and do anything special other than that amazing finish from Gakpo that that got them the goal Estepinian plays to his left that's the substitute Sarmiento ball comes back into Ecuador's half into the last 15 minutes of the game People getting ready at home for England's second game of the tournament up against the USA. Full commentary on the way from 7 o'clock here on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Here's Platter. Platter's ball up to the halfway line. Sarmiento picks it up. He's trying to get away in midfield here from Timber, who's stuck with him all the way. Timber's clung on to him, though. Fouled him. Free kick for Ecuador. Wouldn't be at all surprised if Ecuador go on and win this game. Absolutely really not. Wouldn't. Absolutely not. They've... they've done really well actually it's been a good performance from them they've shown some good passing and when they have gone forwards they've, they've linked up quite well and they do it with just real purpose you know they've, they've, they've got a presence about them when they go and do something they commit fully and it's, it's been a good performance from them Torres ball over the top towards Valencia jumps with Ake Ake wins the header it bounces loose on the edge of the Dutch box here's Blint Blint side foots one forward Berghaus tries to flick it on in midfield Sarmiento heads it down to Estepinian. Burkhaus too quick for him, rushes in, nicks the ball off him, knocks it out for a throw into Ecuador on the left hand side. England USA tonight, Matt, how are you feeling ahead of I mean, you saw England live in the yeah. first game, they look very positive in that one. Yeah, very good. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. And I think, you know, if England approach it in a similar manner, there hasn't been a lot of talk about. England. I don't no, know, I know. Whether or not because you're so consumed in everything else that's going on here, it's quite nice that it's just kind of gone into the background and now oh, they're playing again. And I think it's, it's good for the players. I think we're in, in a good place. Um, interesting to see the team and what changes there may be. Yeah. But and, if any. And like you said, Matt, as well, listening to Raheem Sterling earlier on in the show, talking about please don't put too much pressure on Bellingham and Saka. And the, but it's, it's only because people are so excited about the foot they brought that fantastic yeah. club form into the game now Ecuador just given the ball away on the edge of their own box but Gakpo can't do anything with it because immediately Ecuador sense the danger we're right back on it and they're buzzing Brilliant. around now moving through midfield Mendes tries to lay it off to Estupinian might get a second chance here he's fouled another free kick for Ecuador just inside their own half there's another lovely little piece of movement and timing you know their runs off the ball Ecuador have been really good 
today. They, they see the space, they, they see the opportunity, somebody anticipates, wins the ball, and then they've got players moving in exactly the right direction at the right time. And they've just got some nice passing combinations as well that kind of break through the midfield and all of a sudden they're running at the back three. Double change coming, Martin Derone is coming on and Vout Veghorst is coming on up front. Coop Miners comes off and Gakpo, the goal scorer, uh, comes off. So Vout Veghorst, people will know that name, currently playing his club football at Besiktas on loan from Burnley. If you remember, he was signed in January to try and dig them out of relegation trouble. Did score a couple of goals, but that was all he could manage. And Burnley couldn't stay in the Premier League. He's out there now for the Netherlands, trying to see if he can find a winner in the game but Ecuador has certainly looked more likely uh, Veghorst is first thing he's done is actually give the ball away Ecuador attacking down the left with Estupinian Martin Derone is right with him forces him out wide to the left hand side Estupinian struggles to keep his balance keeps the ball in play wins the corner for Ecuador in front of a massive stretch of Ecuadorian fans in the yellow shirts dangerous situation for the Dutch now we've seen how Ecuador have enjoyed these set pieces they really do come up and are very organized in terms of organized chaos almost they like to clump together really make life difficult for the Dutch to get hold of anyone and, and maybe mark man to man they, they really bunch up I'm looking at Hincapié just leaning into Van Dijk whoever it is all the time just trying to unsettle the defenders Perozo and Torres the two centre-backs have linked arms and they're just moving now they make separate runs Perozo to the near post the ball is beyond him it goes to the far post Valencia jumps comes out to Preciado hits the ball on the bounce and smashes it miles over the bar he's good in the air Valencia isn't he I don't know, he's not the tallest is he but he just times it well he's got a good leap yeah they look for him a lot from wide areas Lucas Moore is another one like that good yeah. in the air Yep. Little fellow is good in the air. Ake. Okay. There's a lot of little fellas that are good in the air. <laughs> Flint plays down the left. Perozo intercepts. Caicedo. Ball to Sarmiento, who's added a bit more zip to this Ecuador performance. Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1. Into the last 10 minutes of the game. England, USA is on the way. Ball is back with Felix Torres in his light blue boots. Plays across to Perozo. Perozo chips it forward. Nice control from Plata. Keeps the ball. Caicedo plays into midfield. Mendes lays it back to Torres. He just sweetly curls it with his left foot. Away to Hincapié. Hincapié back to Mendes, who drops in between the centre backs. Chips the ball out to the right. Perozo calmly controls it. Chased by Depay. Depay gives up that chase, and Torres is able to walk out with the ball at his feet. Mendes cross to his right, ball in the centre circle, Sarmiento gets involved, plays back to Torres, cross here to Hincapié, Dutch are just chasing at the moment, Hincapié looking for the ball down the left hand side, Estupinian, run was blocked by Dumfries, he wasn't going to get there anyway. Uh, Ake receives the ball from Andris Noppert, draw remember in this game which is exactly how it stands at the moment, means Qatar will be the first team, the host eliminated from the competition even ahead of their final game against the Netherlands. You'll have the Netherlands on four, Ecuador on four, and Senegal on three going into the final group games. Torres clears with his right foot. Now Valencia is interested in this. He's going to chase it into space on the left. Dumfries is quick, just beats him to it. And Dumfries is able to play the ball back to his goalkeeper, Noppert. I think it was Timber, beg your pardon. They're not giving anything up, are they? I mean, he was not favourite for that ball at all. Valencia but he put everything into that sprint to try and win it or at least put the Dutch player under pressure Dumfries is actually playing as, as right wing on miles up that right hand touchline now Veghorst out to the right now here is Dumfries he's going to chase that he's not no. going to get it goal kick and I'm trying to see if there is a change of shape from the Dutch but it doesn't appear to be does no. there it's the back three De Jong sat in front it's been quite deep De Jong hasn't he it's not really been in that attacking area of the pitch to, to put crosses or creative passes in at all. Seven minutes remaining, plus a bit of added time, I'm sure. Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1. Goal kick for Ecuador. Which Hernan Galindez, 35-year-old, gets ready to take. All in blue, right-footed, sends the ball down the right wing. Blint heads it forward, Preciado jumps. Second header won by... Perozo, prodigious leap by Caicedo to flick the ball on, Preciado steps in, wins a good ball for Ecuador, the pass just behind Valencia, he was on his heels, he's done well to control that, he's in a tight spot now, 
Throw in goes to Ecuador. He knocked it into the shins of Ake. 1 1. Preciado just pulling up the socks, adjusting the shin pads, gets ready to take the throw. Masses of urgency from, from Ecuador at this point to, to try and win the game. Preciado taking his time. Caicedo runs towards him from midfield, doesn't fancy that, throws it down the line, Sarmiento does well, tries to play the ball into Valencia, that's intercepted, Derone back here to Timber, Timber's closed down by Caicedo, Van Dijk plays the ball wow. back to Nopper, who controlled that well about a yard ahead of his goal line, that was heading in. You got a bit edgy there, yeah. he had a little... He did, didn't he? Yeah. Very unlike Van Dijk, nice little cushion pass forward now though to De Jong, De Jong just shapes to move to his right and instead just keeps going to his left, he's frustrated with lack of movement ahead of him, that's, I was going to say that's nice, De Jong couldn't get onto the pass from Depay and Estupinian is motoring forward, Estupinian trying to get away from Dumfries on the left hand side, Derone comes over as well, double Dutch action stops Estupinian and Estupinian with the foul free kick for the Netherlands. There's no flustering knop hurt though is there? He no. just doesn't appear to be um, edgy at all, looks very relaxed customer. Yep, yeah. got to play with your feet I think if you're going to play for the Netherlands in goal. Oh, Ake. Strong challenge on him by Caicedo. Ake would suddenly got up a head of steam heading down the inside left channel and Caicedo's come flying in, knocked him over and now this is a free kick where the Netherlands could put a decent bit of delivery into the into the Ecuadorian penalty area. He's another player who's done well. He hasn't picked up a booking, has he, Caicedo today? <laughs> he has no. done very well because he's put a lot of tackles in. That one was really... That could have been a booking alone, really. Yeah. You know, a lot of referees would look at that and say that's a yellow card, but... He's been everywhere. It's been very, very good for Ecuador. We've had one in the game, the spider cam, that one on the on the big wires above the players' heads has come in really low. Behind the two Dutch players standing over the free kick, Berghaus and Dubai. Then it disappears and heads over to the centre of the pitch and Berghaus gets ready to take the free kick. That's not great. Headed away by Caicedo. Collected by Timber on the halfway line. Timber plays back to Noppert. Noppert with his left foot. Knocks it forward for De Jong. Sarmiento is there in front of him. He curls the pass around Sarmiento, plays it to De Rone. Here's Timber. Berghaus makes a run ahead of him. Timber just holds on to it. Ten yards inside the Ecuadorian half. Four minutes to play. And it's still Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1, which is going to make the final round of games very interesting, particularly Ecuador against Senegal. Enna Valencia is down, flat on his back in the centre circle. Play continues. Ecuador's manager... Gustavo Alfaro wants the game to stop, but the Netherlands are going to keep playing. It's not a head injury. They're entitled to keep going. Fans don't like it. Dumfries is crossing to the box. He's deflected, caught by Galindez, and I'm sure now he is just going to throw the ball out of play. In fact, he's just lying on his back, holding on to the ball. Yeah. I mean, they weren't going to repay the favour that I think Ecuador gave them when they kicked the ball out earlier in the game in the first half and one of their players went down. I think it was... Might have been Dumfries in the first half where they kicked the ball out when he was down injured, but... They were quite happy to play on, and Valencia, I don't know what happened, oh. was it off the ball? Did he have a collision know, with Van Dijk? Matt. But it's, uh, now, now, there's a little bit of a set two in, in the centre circle, an argument about what happened there, and Van Dijk's trying to calm it down. But the real problem for Ecuador is, they've got to hope Valencia's going to be fit for the game against Senegal, because Jegson Mendes in central midfield is already suspended for that game. They, they don't want to lose, lose no. both of them. No, no, that would be a big problem. Yeah. But it is going to be interesting. Netherlands will, will, will start that final round if this finishes 1-1 on four points. Ecuador on four, Senegal on three, and Qatar will be out on, on zero. Goal difference at the moment. Netherlands plus two, Ecuador plus two, Senegal on, on zero. So in terms of sort of Ecuador and Senegal, that puts the emphasis on Senegal to really try and win that game uh, against Ecuador. Uh, they're going to make a... A double change late on here, Ecuador. Kevin Rodriguez uh, is down on his knees uh, in sort of praying position, kind of pre-match ritual, I think, before he comes onto the field. Both arms lofted in the air. And Romario Ibarra, who started the first game but, uh, but was left out today because of the change of system for Ecuador, uh, is also going to come on. And still worries at the moment about Ena Valencia because he's... He's in exactly the same position he was three minutes ago. He's, he's flat on his back. Is it his face, though? It's like he's, he's holding uh, part he's, of his face. He's pinching the bridge of his nose, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. 
So it doesn't appear to be like a. I wonder if he a knock to the body or the leg, but it, it doesn't look like he's going to continue, no. does it? I wonder if he just ran into someone in yeah. the centre circle and just caught a stray arm or a body. I'd, I'd like to see that again. And obviously, if he has taken a whack to the head, um, then you're going to have to go through the proper concussion protocols to make sure that he is going to be able to play in that in that final group game. Those final group games in this group. Uh, on Tuesday, which is the same day as the final group games uh, for Wales and England, which obviously is Wales against England at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. So, not a good sight here. Country's record goal scorer for Ecuador has done it again for them tonight. He gets a standing ovation as he leaves the field, flat on his back on a stretcher. We really hope he's going to be OK for the final group game. And now the changes are made. Uh, Valencia, obviously, one to come off and just wait to see who the other one is going to be. Yeah, I mean, he's still got his kind of hand on his head, Valencia, as he gets stretched off. He's been such a key player for Ecuador, been brilliant so far in this World Cup, and they'll hope that he'll be absolutely fine to start the next game, which if it, the scoreline finishes like this, that game against Senegal is going to be some game. Yeah, 1-1. Uh, uh, let's get you some England team news ahead of England against USA at 7 o'clock. John Murray. Won't take me long, Ali, because England have named an unchanged team for this game. So the same side that started the first match against Iran. And that will tell you that Harry Kane is confirmed as being fit to start to continue uh, in, in the team as the captain. So uh, same again for England tonight against the USA. Thank you, John. Very much looking forward to listening to that. Don't miss a minute of it. Build-up will start straight after this game. Six minutes of added time to go here. Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1. Winners of England and Wales's group play the runners-up in this group. And vice versa. Runners-up in the England-Wales group play the winners of this group. It, it could well be these two teams yeah. that, that we're talking about. Oh, Noppert's clearance is blocked, but it doesn't go flying back into his goal. Kevin Rodriguez, the substitute, got a foot in the way. I think Nopper, as he cleared, knew he was away from his goal, so it was probably yeah. safe, but it could have spun anywhere. It could. It was a little bit lapsed. Aki took his time passing the ball back, and then Rodriguez, who's just come on, was super keen to charge that ball down, and I think he just took Nopper by surprise. Uh, I'm, not I've just seen Valencia, by the way, on the um, yeah. monitor. He's actually icing kind of the side of his knee or the back of his calf, oh. that area. So, um, so I wonder whether the the hand to the face of the bridge of the nose a bit like Neymar is to exactly. sort of worry about exactly. what that means the disappointment oh, of, of no. perhaps that felt a lot worse than, than what it looked because we knew the knee was a problem coming in yeah. didn't we yeah so, um, so his ice in is back on the bench now he's hobbled, yeah. hobbled onto the bench yeah. and he's got a big ice pack strapped to it it's come so late in the game as well yeah well, we really hope he's going to be okay scored the goal tonight Netherlands 1 Ecuador 1 got about 4 minutes of added time remaining and then we can all get stuck into a bit of England against USA. Four more games coming your way tomorrow from the World Cup on Five Live and BBC Sounds as well. Preciado tries ahead. Oh, takes a little glance on the way through from Rodriguez into the arms of Nopper. I think Preciado was trying to head that in from the edge of the box. and There was no pace on it. I mean, that would have it been would the have most been incredible header of all, absolute bullet header of all it? time. <laughs> if he'd managed to pull it off. Nopper with his left foot. Down the middle of the field. Netherlands pretty disappointing, you'd have to say their performance this evening. Ake clears with his left foot and out it goes for a throw. Their final game on Tuesday against the host Qatar who as it stands are heading out of the tournament. So tomorrow 10 o'clock Tunisia Australia that game also on on BBC One. So if you want our commentary with the uh, with the BBC pictures uh, you go to the iPlayer and you click on World Cup Extra. We've got Poland Saudi Arabia in Argentina Mexico's group that's at, at one o'clock. France, Denmark at four. John Murray and Alan Shearer with your commentary there. Argentina, Mexico tomorrow night at seven o'clock UK time. Kevin Rodriguez chases down the right. Ake does well. Gets to the ball first. Slides in heavily. Knocks it out for a throw into Ecuador. He's been ready to come on Rodriguez, hasn't he, since he's been on. He is charging everything down, running channels. Ake, really good tackle on him there. Had to get low, get underneath him and smash the ball out in for a throw in. He, 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 he was the wild card pick in this squad, man. That's he, right. he plays in the Ecuadorian second division. And when, when his name was named in the squad, people thought, well, what on earth is he, is he doing? And the manager yep. said he is a player of the people. 
Yeah, he represents this nation, and you're right, he's, it, he's fired up. You can see what he means by that, can't mm. you? It, it kind of like shows in, in how he carries himself on the pitch and, like I say, the commitment and energy that he's shown since coming on off the bench, you know, really has had an impact. Two and a half minutes to go. Ecuador throw on the right. The ball's come off De Jong. De Jong's angry with the decision. No one's gone to get the ball to take the throw. Eventually one is thrown to Preciado. The Ecuadorian fans chanting loudly, hoping their team can get a late winner here. Throw in, and they've won a corner, a and chance. they are good from the set pieces. They really are. They've had quite a few as well. Nine opportunities to put the ball in the box, so that's all they want, Ecuador. 95th minute of the game. Netherlands won, Ecuador won. Set piece opportunity. Caicedo offers himself short. I don't know why you'd be going for that. No. Sarmiento is going to take the corner. 90 seconds to play make a massive difference to the group as well i mean it'd be it'd be bad news for senegal if ecuador get the win because netherlands play qatar in the last game so senegalese fans i think will be hoping this one does finish 1-1 sarmiento with the right foot there's the delivery van dyke commanding header heads it out of the penalty area sarmiento controls ball gets away from him down the right and it goes out for a dutch throw on the left hand side minute to play there's a big header that from van dyke in the right place at the right times a decent ball in from Sarmiento gets his head on it and just clears it high up into the air one more substitute possibly coming on for Ecuador that will be Alan Franco where's the number 21 play back underway there may not be time for it uh, Ake's beaten in the air ball drops to Blint Blint clears with his left foot ball might run to Depay he can't control it Torres has a swing slices it straight up in the air Headed forward by Caicedo, now out to the right with Preciado, Preciado's ball forward finds Ibarra, Ibarra controls it, halfway line has given it away, here's Blint, Blint plays back to De Jong, De Jong with the outside of his right foot plays back to Van Dijk, I think we've got about 20 seconds to go, Netherlands 1, Ecuador 1. Netherlands attacking down the right, they've given the ball away, can Ecuador steal it right at the death, ball played uh. down the middle of the pitch but no it's inaccurate and Netherlands have it back and that may well be that for this evening. De Jong across to his left hand side, referees had the first look at the watch, Ake comes steaming forward, wide to his left to Blint, refs had another look at the watch, that's that, it finishes 1-1 all to play for for three nations going into the final round of matches in Group A. The host Qatar are out even before they play their final game. Netherlands on four points, Ecuador on four points, Senegal with their win today on three. Dutch today, Matthew Upson, very disappointing. Ecuador were excellent. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think that Ecuador gave a brilliant account of themselves after going a goal down very early on they have to stick at it they they have real energy they have ability to put the ball why they've got great runners off the ball and, and most importantly they played like a really committed team together and I think you saw that in their performance the Dutch we know they have some quality in that team but for me it's just a little bit lackluster not enough energy not not enough oomph to their performance to really do any damage to Ecuador at all and you know, I, I, I felt Ecuador were probably deservedly could have won that game. And I think what you said during the second half summed it up, Matt. If you're an England fan or a Wales fan and thinking about potential opponents in the last 16, and Wales obviously have to beat England in the final game to even give themselves a chance of doing that, on this evidence today, you would be more fearful of facing Ecuador than the Netherlands. Couple of lacklustre performances from the Netherlands so far, but they're yet to be beaten. Won the first game against Senegal. This one has finished 1-1. Enna Valencia, of course, got the equaliser for Ecuador. And that's how it finished here, Kelly. 1-1.